everybody was hustling and everybody was seeing how they were connected to some way or another with either the patriarchs or the Gen I ran the drug entity and do you have a guy who in this entity and that guy who in that entity I sold two or three thousand gallons of PCP, been kidnapped twice, shoot out with the police. No, I didn't look at it as a mafia or anything like that. It was, oh, that's my dad. That's my grandpa. This is, you know what I mean? This is my family. Yeah. I was getting shot at with AKs, you know, shit like that. You know, turn the camera. That's the lady I'm on from the club where I'll pull on the camera. They thought inside when they make the sausage, they grind up the sausage meat. They thought maybe he was ground up inside the sausage meat because my father-in-law hated this man. He was the one who was my brother-in-law. He was, so they thought maybe this guy ground him up in the sausage. Stop glorifying rats. Now you're police. Now let me ask you this. If you do an arrest and if someone just gives up their people, like, you know, you still want to see integrity, you know, like where does that come from coming from the, the police angle? Welcome to Mafia Truth, everyone. Uh, it's great to, Mike, it's just so great that you're back too from vacation and uh, because we did one though yesterday and now we're coming back with a great one tonight. And uh, how you how you feeling? How you doing today, my man? Great, man. Stoked to be back, man. Thank you so much for being so welcome and coming back, man. Really enjoy Yeah, it. man, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we held the fort down as best we could. You were taking oh, some, great, uh, some great videos with the reviews and stuff like that. People were enjoying that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. And you did some good shows, man. You, you, you went on crime spot. You, uh, uh, yeah, that was, did the that was seven good. hour marathon with, with yeah. Johnny and fish. Damn. Yeah. I wasn't playing around, man. Wasn't that was playing serious. around Hell yeah. seven hours. That was a record. Yeah. Seven hours, nine minutes though. And, um, but, uh, Ro, 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 I saw what you said. I didn't check the studio, but I will after. Thank you very much. And just so everyone knows, um, if you want to donate or support the channel, the link is, um, in the comments and pinned up or whatever tonight's guest though mike we got a good one man so we got a so, good one my uh, man so if you guys are into true. yeah so if you guys are into like you know the roy de mayo gemini crew i mean he knows a lot more than just that but this is uh going to be a great episode and nyc crime spot is coming on and we're going to be talking about the de mayo crew and all that so let's bring him in there he is Yo, what's up, guys? How are you? What's up, Crime Spot? How you doing? What's up, you? my man? How are you? Good, good. Let me say hi to Roro, OG, Pete D. Pete D's a cool guy. He's friends with somebody that was uh, affiliated with that crew. Yeah, yo. What's awesome. up, yeah, yo? Guys, please subscribe and like this video to get it moving. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. What's up, OG Robe? What's up? Mr. Nice Guy, how are we tonight? Glad to thank you guys for joining us. This is great. PT, what's up? How you doing, my man? Right back at you. And we got Immy's Yayo guy. All right. What's up, my man? <laughs> Love that name. That's funny. Immy's Yayo. <laughs> Probably some good shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, all right. Let's see. I miss anyone in Ruby and... Um, NYC Christ, but so what's going on, man? How you doing? No, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. I'm chilling. Yeah. Things no, man, thanks for having good. me on too as well. Really grateful, man. Your channel is uh, like I tell everyone, guys, he doesn't just do the streams, he's boots on the ground and um on location all the time out there in Queens, New York, or wherever. And um, he's uh the, the, it's just it's one of those channels that uh drama free zone where it's actually real history and real um knowledge and like you know not go you know it's it's real and he finds out different stuff because he actually goes to the places so that's what i love doing when you guys see me doing the walk and talk like the boots on the ground thing is the best you know what i mean mike yeah but yeah, um for sure man i hate i missed that one man when when y'all did before i was sitting there trying to watch with horrible wi-fi service and stuff man and yeah out there like, down oh, there man. Stuff. yeah yeah the middle of the booms and whatnot but man that was you know the the footage you got is awesome, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thank Having you, man. Actual, actual footage to places like, yeah, oh, you want – this is this place. This is the front door. Man, that's awesome, man. Really Thanks, awesome. man. Also, guys, thank in you. the description is the link to his channel to hit it and subscribe. 
And trust Thank me, you. you won't be disappointed. Definitely though. subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. I got to put all that in the database. I thought about it, like putting it all together in a database. Yeah. And charging gotcha. to use it for your videos. You know, that's the way to do it. Yeah. I heard you last time talking about that when y'all did the show. That's smart, man. Very, very smart. I would definitely do that if I was you. Man. You know what, though, uh, Christ, but not to cut you guys off. I um, I want to go into if, you, if this is cool with you, though, on uh, more because me and Mike did a show on the DeMeo crew about what was that like two months ago, Mike, right? Yeah, we weren't coming. Yeah. We weren't coming on like the know alls of everything, but I know a lot though about that case because I with the Westies and stuff. But um, so then I came on your show and it was just like well, I just kept learning. That's what we try to do is always get at the truth. So I think that that's what we want to like start off with. Um, you know, with the mail again on this channel and uh, just start just you know take it from there like we know from how Roy uh, you know started picking his crew and everything like that, and then we'll go from there. Let me ask, can I ask one question real fast, man, before we get cranked up? Sure. Because we said this backstage and I thought it was a very interesting point, man. You said that you don't cover anything out of NYC. No. Dang, that's NYC man. crime spot. So he has I mean, listen, is- I'll go, I'll go Long Island, upstate, like it's yeah. New York to me. Right, right, right. The only time I ever did anything outside of uh, New York City was when, obviously, I did Long Island or whatever, but outside of the state of New York was. In New Jersey, in Ducktown, outside of Atlantic City, I went to Nikki Scarfo's former home, and I walked through all the alleyways, and I gave you like a tour of that whole um, part, which blew my mind that no one ever really did it and put it on YouTube. So while I was in Atlantic City, I just said, "I'm fuck it, I'm going to go do it." Um, yeah. Sketch kind of place. If you watch the video, it's a little weird, but yeah, that's basically the only time I've ever filmed or outside of New York or did anything. Wow, man! Did you just? set that for yourself from the beginning or did it happen along the way no it was from the beginning it was called new york city crime spot um, and you just said that's it man i'm just sticking to that yeah. and that's it Bad and the ass. point the point was and still the point is is to obviously cover like mob stuff but cover like forgotten new york city crimes because there's so many bizarre and weird ones that no one's ever heard of that really don't get the same amount of play um and just to back that up, I mean, my most viewed video has nothing to do with the mob. It's it's a New York City general crime story. So that's really how I started out. And I mixed in the mob stuff. And then when that stuff gets views, you kind of get drunk on it. You know, you start doing all oh, I got to do a bunch of mob shit now, whatever. But I'm still doing the non mob shit. I'll never stop doing that. That's cool, man. It was up and to the me. Name's that was NYC crime spot. So you could just do anything in NYC. Man, you can cover plus, it right. That's all you need, though, really, man. NYC right. is, I mean, if you walk outside and you're there every day, forget about it. <laughs> You know what I mean? No, yeah, you joke, got uh, content for yeah. freaking I, years, man, eternity. My, my so grandpa's listen, brother was whacked there, man, in in New York. Oh, I mean, oh is I that right? News, I've got the newspaper article, man. I, you know what? I'm gonna get that to you. You may be able to get more information on that for me. 100. I would love to look at That's that. That's badass. Yeah, we got to do that. Sorry, Loomis. Let's go into what your agenda was on that. No, man. no, no. It's Let's all roll. good. I just want to go. <laughs> let me just let everyone know. The, and the uh, guys, please chat away. And uh, we're just gonna do this, and we're gonna then we're gonna go to the comments and stuff like that. Um, because if I just keep hitting comment and doing the show, um, you've seen all my brain stems all over the place. So me too. We're just gonna yeah, we're gonna have a little talk. Then we're gonna come back to the comments. And thank you all so much. Please subscribe. So actually, yeah, what's going on, man? How about we just talk about, uh, try to think. Yeah, talk about Roy's like rise. Roy, who was Roy DeMeo? Well, what, what you said before was like getting to the truth, right? Um, and just for, for clarity, like getting to the truth would be ex- probably extremely hard because of the, the complicated case that it is. Um, and I'll also say open and honestly, I mean, some of the viewers here might know that there's a lot of things that I might know that I'm not allowed to talk about a, because it's entrusted to someone who told me or B because I have a friend who's writing a Roy DeMeo book, um, which would be, you know, he's totally good. Hundreds yeah. of thousands of words into that next yeah, book yeah. You don't want to with do a something. bunch of sources. And if you look at my channel, it's my friend. So obviously there's things that I can't say. I just want to say like, you know, cause you mentioned like getting to the real truth of it all. Um, yeah, well, just within what you I can acknowledge. Yeah, totally. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, whatever you can acknowledge is fine. And there's some individuals, though, like, you know, like almost I want to take it to um, tales of each, like not each one, not everyone, but some of the guys I have questions about, you know, like Dracula and stuff yeah. like that. And we'll get <laughs> to all that. Oh, I want to just say something real quick because I just, 
I was talking to Chicky the other day because I because was congratulating him because he uh, I see him all over the place and he's doing good. I mentioned it last night. And, you know, I was just talking to him for a second. And then I was scrolling. I saw Polisi. Is that his name? Sal Polisi? Sal, Sal Polisi. Yeah. He's saying that like he was around Roy and then that, um, you know, who we were talking about. Uh, what's their name with the garage? Uh, the brothers. Oh, the oh, brothers? Yeah, Test, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Charles, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah I got and it. John. He's saying John like that Charles? Roy was something about Roy was bringing them. To, I thought he got buried at they got buried in dumpsters in the fountain. Uh, so listen, found listen, I, I, all right, we could talk about Polisi for a minute. I mean, now he's a guy who apparently was mixed in with the mob with the Gotti crew with a lot of those guys out of Ozone Park, East New York, at one point in his life, and then in the mid '80s or something, he becomes a cooperator. And he leaves that world uh, on from that. He writes a book uh, about uh, some club, apparently some social club called the Sinatra Club. And then he appears in a bunch of like mob documentaries over the years as like the gangster. I think he's in the new uh, Gotti documentary. Get Gotti. I haven't watched it yet. I believe he's in there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, yeah. I, I found like one source of him, like getting arrested with some guys. Years back, maybe in the late 60s, but. A lot of what he says, I don't know if there's much to back it up, and I, I'm not really going to call him out, but I'll call him out on the Roy stuff because, you yeah, know, that's what I'm wondering about. there's a lot of guys that, you know, once all of these guys are dead, obviously, they start connecting themselves to these guys and they start telling stories. Now, Sal Polisi came out with that book, The Sinatra Club, and I believe. Yeah. And he made a movie on it. 14, what was it, 2014 or 13 or something like that? Um and I think he mentions Roy DeMeo once in that book. From what I could look at from when I had the PDF copy, I found one time he mentioned Roy, and he says that Roy DeMeo was feeding bodies to Charles Carniglia so Charles Carniglia can dissolve them in barrels of acid. Yeah. And so, so go ahead. Just the premise of that of Roy feeding somebody else bodies to take care of number one, that doesn't make any sense because you know, they killed, there was two things they did. They intentionally left bodies out on the street to find, and they would do this intentionally as a message. There's, there's different um, reasons why they would do it, or they would dismember them. They would end up at the fountain Avenue dump or wherever they would end up. Now in the only time that kind of came about with Charles Coniglia doing that was in Charles Coniglia's trial in uh, 2008, 2009. This would all come out and they would say that that's what happened to John Favara, which was the guy that hit Gotti's kid, mm -hmm. that his body was handed to Charles Coniglia and the witnesses, the informants, Peter Bud Zaccaro, Kevin McMahon. These guys were saying that his body ended up in a barrel and he was dissolved in some kind of dissolving agent, acid, whatever it may be. Right. So I just think that Polisi heard about that. And like five years later, his book comes out and he's making shit up about Roy giving him bodies to dissolve. Like if you knew about this back then, like, why wouldn't you cooperate? You became a cooperator, right? Why right. wouldn't you say that? Oh, I know this guy's dissolving bodies. I know this. I know that. Right. So when did he go? Do you know when he went bad? Mid eighties, eighty five, eighty six. Okay, yeah, he was early. He was one of the first, like with Gotti. And I, not to cut off, I just want to say it kind of seems like a lot of these guys, like you were saying, like how some are dead or they can't validate it. And like I was saying, one of the guys, like Michael Francis, said he was in jail with Sammy when he wasn't. Like you know what I mean? Just little stuff yeah. like that. Do you think a lot of the, I think a lot of these guys are just embellishing, like saying, "Yeah, I was around this guy, I was around that guy," because then it brings in the views or whatever. And well, he says he was they, around them for a whole year, and he was like getting cars for him. Why would I don't know how true that is. Family. I've never heard that, and no one has well, ever he would put heard that in his book, though. He put that in the Sinatra Club if it was. Why wouldn't Something. you, right? Why well, wouldn't what's you? that? Why wouldn't you, right? Yeah. Well, not just so, that. I remember yeah. when he went on on uh, Geraldo back in the day. Do y'all remember that, man? You guys may not yeah. have. Do you remember yeah, that? Like, like he was one of the first the track suit. Yeah. yeah. He's one of the first dudes back in the day. He's on Geraldo. He could have talked about anything at that point, right? I mean, once he's already. That's Why not? He, have to. he has to. He can't lie. Yeah. He had to have already. That's what I'm saying. He's already turned. He had to have given everything up. He never talked about anything like there was no reason not to. Right. I mean, you're trying to sensationalize yourself. I'm sure at that point he had at some angle, he's trying to get some type of movie deal or whatever. So I, I'm with y'all, man. I think that yep. they start, you know, as other dudes pass on and they can't, you know, you know, uh, make them that they're totally lying and they're full of crap. 
they just start adding their stuff to this. Oh yeah. By the way, I did this too, man. And I was doing yeah. this and uh, yeah. Because so. the people who watch the content write in and email them asking questions like, Hey, were you around Roy? Were you around this? And then their team gets around and they're like, all right, well, you know what? Look at all these people asking about Roy. Yeah. Roy's not around. <laughs> so I'm going to say I'm walking the streets with Roy. You know what I mean? Roy. And you know, what's crazy. And I don't want to knock that channel because I don't want to knock that kid because I think he's a good kid. And I I'm think not even that, talking about the channel. I'm just talking about Sal. Yeah, I'm just saying, but this is going to be a general statement about the channel. Like, and the kid runs the channel with Polisi or whatever they got going oh, on. Oh, you're talking about like, Adrian? Yeah, he's a young kid. Like, I don't knock no, I love the guy. He's him, great. But, no, not the you know, channel. Like, no, it's not, yeah, it's not him. He's right, obviously right, very motivated. But, like, I see even, like, a few weeks ago, like, I'll watch them. Like, they said something about – they're going to do a video about Corniglia, but we got to do a little more research. I think that's what Salvatore Polisi said. What the fuck you got to do research what? for? You were on the streets with this fucking guy. You know him. You win him. There's research. no research. Right, right. Okay, but even if they did research, come out and say, hey, yeah, guys, we did some research. Don't say I was fucking next to him because and just, it's all eagle. Listen, real yeah. quick, there's a channel that's called Mob Rats or whatever, and they asked a question today saying – was Sammy God? He's number one. Was he an underboss? And everyone's like, no, he's just a rat. No, he's a, I said, yes, he absolutely was. And I said, there are, everyone has an ego. Like, I like this guy. I like that guy. Yeah. All we want to do is get to the truth and find out history. I don't fucking, you know what I mean? We're not, um, what's the word? Uh, val validating what they do. And all yeah, that. on this it's, team it's or great. pro them or whatever. Yeah, like I'm it's pro just, this, pro that. We just yeah. want to, we tell it like it is. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you this know, is I'm not a fan, but I get an action figure of one of these fucking guys. No, yeah. but I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this is not to be glorified. Alone. I mean, obviously, this is not to be glorified. Alone. I mean, speaking of Carniglia, I did a lot of stuff on Carniglia on my channel. And the last one I did at the end of that video, I'm walking on the streets of uh, Ozone Park, I'm talking, and, and I disparage him as a person as the things he did. And people got fucking mad at me saying, Oh, who are you to judge? Who are you to do this? Well, right. you know what? I'm sorry. When you fucking kill a court officer, when you execute a guy at JFK airport, a fucking uh, an armored truck guard, when you when you cut people up, you put them in barrels of acid. And you worried about me judging somebody like that. But that's the shit you fucking deal with on YouTube. Sorry to curse. No, man, yeah. that's OK. Stop the cussing. Hey, where's it at, man? Stop the cussing. Uh, I, don't know. I don't think I brought stop it up. Baloney. That's OK. Yeah, the stop baloney. the baloney and stop. Hey, <laughs> so, hey, I got a point on that one, man. That's pretty good. That's a good one. Crying spot. Here's here's my deal with that type. <laughs> here's my deal with that, man. you got these guys that come on, man, and they're big time anti-rat and nobody likes somebody that's snitching for that reason or whatever. I, you know what I'm saying? That's just. People don't like that when you're a kid. You know what I'm saying? But put yourself in a position where you're about to do life and you may not want to do it for these guys. If you can get out, you're already a cutthroat gangster. You think, you, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't make you not a killer anymore. So it's like people, people get that mixed up. Anyway, my point is I see these guys a lot of times going, man, that guy, he, he, he was a low life killer. He's, he was a scumbag uh, rat and this and that. And then in the same breath, they're going, Man, what's his name was a stand up great guy. You yeah. know, this dude yeah. whacked 50 yeah. people or whatever. Yeah, he's a yeah. stand up great guy. You yeah. know, it's like, man, you can you can have to put this in perspective, yeah. man. You know, exactly. it's okay. You like it's all about the accountability, the accountability though, too. Like, you know but what I'm saying? Yeah. Though, yeah. You know what you're doing before you signed up for it. Take fucking responsibility and they did an oath for it. Yeah. But I don't so, even take it that far. Like, I don't even call anyone a low life killer. I don't even do any of that. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. But you I'm know saying, what I'm saying? Like, but I'm, I mean, they're saying like, the yeah. dudes that cooperated, they're pinning on them that they, because yeah. they were killers and they were, these dudes are, they're low lives because they were killers. But the dudes that didn't cooperate that may have killed, like, say, Carnegie, that he's not bad. He's not a gangster. He's not bad because he didn't cooperate. And listen, man, what? I'm, what I'm, I'm anti cooperate. So oh, I got don't you, get God. me wrong. What I'm saying is they, they, you can't put the jacket on this dude of being a killer and he's bad just because he went bad and ratted when you're not going to acknowledge that this dude did it also and just say he's an upstanding citizen because he didn't cooperate. Yeah. He, had, he had his own morals and, and, and uh, ethics of what he was going to stick to. But he's right. still, if he's a killer, he's a killer, man. You know what I mean? And I'm not I'm not judging or whatever. I'm just that's something I see a lot. man. No, you're 100 percent right, man. You're 100 percent right. Yeah, I'm like I'm just being honest. I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm fucking totally lost. I don't know what you're talking dude, about. But... <laughs> listen, man. No, I can't disagree. Listen, do you, I can't do disagree. Do you get what I'm? I see. Okay, I know, I just no, go people will be like, 
Sammy was a piece of trash, man. He killed 19 people, right? And the same people say they're pro John Gotti. And Jan, John Gotti, most stand-up dude you're going to say, sat there, did life, stuck the finger to everyone till the day he died. Hardcore. Yeah, was his character. And that he was his real character, I'm saying. But the same people, they don't, they'll, they don't care that he killed anyone. Or that he yeah. was in. You see what I'm saying? I know. That, I got you. I got that's, you. That's all my point of it, man. I'm. Oh, I'm I got it now. Stop I got the now. baloney. Stop I'm the done. baloney. Yeah. So listen, let's go back though to um, yeah, let's just go right back into like you know Roy DeMeo, like because I want people to come in here and find out like you know new information. Just because I know stuff, maybe some people out there don't know. So if you just want to start off with who is Roy DeMeo, and we'll just rock and roll from there. Well, as far as like the beginnings, I mean, it's basically the same thing. I mean, I could maybe add a little more context. And once again, like more of this will come out later. I really. But some but, people might not even know the same thing as my point when they watch this show. Maybe someone might see it done. They'll be like, this the first time. You know what I mean? So that's why I was just like. Well, yeah, I mean, he's a guy who's born in Brooklyn in 19 in September of 1940. I mean, you know, he grew up like like many people over there, like kind of middle class family. And a lot of people say um, he grew up in. Flatlands. I mean, technically, he was on Avenue P. I think it's technically considered uh, Sheepshead Bay where he was living, but you know, whatever. We don't have to play semantics. But he would grow up uh, regular, you know, brick kind of two story home over on Avenue P. Um, when he was 10 years old, his brother would die in the Korean War. So I'm sure, you know, that would have a serious effect on him. Um, not long after that, I believe when he was around 20 years old, he, he would lose his father. His father would die. He would have, um, and by high school, you know, he was already getting involved in um, loan sharking. And by the time he was 18, he already had a Cadillac. You know, he was he was making money already. And originally, he was hanging around, like, the junkyard scene. with the, It was a lot of Lucchese stuff, the junkyard scene, Vario's junkyard. A lot of guys, I know you got uh, Paul Vario from Goodfellas, Stop the Baloney uh, thing coming up. But uh, a lot of guys were around yeah. Barrios Junkyard at that time. When I Got say it. a lot, I mean, <laughs> there you <he is>. go. <laughs> when I say a lot, it's like fucking you could have over 100 different guys going in and out of that junkyard, fencing shit, doing stuff yeah. with cars. So that whole scene was revolving around the junkyard scene. What was going on? What was being sold there? Stolen clothes, stolen cars, cigarettes. I mean, this is, of course, maybe you'll squash a body in a car or something, you know something crazy like that. So that's that's the kind of scene that a lot of guys like him grew up around in those parts of Brooklyn. Um God. that makes sense, you know, to you. Right. Absolutely. Right. How about yeah. um, do you know a lot about Vario as far as like uh didn't he have a sex offense case, man? Yeah, yeah, he he got arrested I believe in the 1930s for a an R word as you say. Right, right. Yeah, he would he would get in trouble for that. Yeah, I don't recall how much time he did. For that, but I'm pretty sure it was in the 1930s. Okay. okay. Yeah, he does have a, an R word charge on his record. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Because I've heard people mention those. That. Right, right. And that's. Yeah. 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 That's, Christy Tick Fenari, I believe, has one of those also. Is that right? Wow. I believe so. Yeah. A sexual assault or, a, or an R word or something. And, um, yeah, I don't know how that affects them there. I know on the West Coast, man, if, they're, if you're doing time and you got that, that's that's going to really put you in a bad position but in the feds and with them. I don't know, man, you know, and who they are too. So, yeah. yeah but a lot of those guys in that crew and, and, you know, I think people that might be from hey, Brooklyn, I mean, and this is just from me studying and just from like my family and my mom's side from East New York and from those areas in Brooklyn, you know, a lot of those guys in that crew, you got to understand also like in the Roy DeMeo crew, they're growing up in kind of like, um, I would say almost like, I guess, grimy, like more grimier parts of Brooklyn where you still had a lot of Italians, but like the landscape is very different than, let's say, a Bensonhurst, a Bay Ridge, a Diker Heights, where you had some people with a lot of money. Um, I think more areas of like Canarsie and East New York and places like that, you had a lot of um, you had a lot of the junkyard scene. You had a lot of like working class people like cops, firemen, you know, living mm -hmm. next to mobsters. You had places with projects. You had a fucking landfill there that people were living by this shitty landfill. So I think a lot of those guys in that crew also come from kind of a different upbringing than maybe some of the other guys you might think of. Maybe like the Benson, like the Sammy the Bull Gravanos or whatever, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Like yeah, even the like the landscape Carmichael of the area came from a great family, you know, like Persico. Some people came from great families that weren't even. Yeah, born yeah. Like so, like the landscape in which these guys grew out is this kind of a different neck of the woods in Brooklyn. It's a little more rough neck, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Got probably it. shaped who they were. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So then Roy, though, absolutely, as a kid growing up, and he's already loan sharking in high school, all that stuff. Um, does it ever say like who he was influenced by, though? Because you know, like if you hear like Sammy's story, he had uh, I forget the old man's name, but uh, was Roy just seeing it on the street and wanted to be uh, a mobster, or was he just around it from birth? Well, from from what's reported, I mean, the Profaci, uh family had the Profaci family on his block on Avenue B, which I believe was the nephews and. I think Roy's mother, there's uh, there's an inkling that she had kind of a fascination with that lifestyle um, and that she had a relationship with a woman in the Profaci family also who was close. I don't recall if it's the sister of Joseph Profaci or somebody that was really close to the Profacis. And Albert DeMeo makes it sound like, and from what it appears – to me, from what I heard, I think his mom had a bit of a fascination with the mob lifestyle and maybe even, now I can't say this for sure, but maybe even looked down on the father because he was like a working bum and there was a lot okay. of well-to-do yeah, guys that. around at the time. Now, this is coming from sources that I know that and people writing books and other people who have said who have said these things and kind of found out these things. And I think you can get that idea from Albert's book too. You can kind of tell that she uh, maybe had an affinity for that. And that's, yeah, the Albert DeMeo, Roy's kid, that book's for the sins of my father, right? That's the correct. Crew, her people are listening. Yeah, for the sins of my father. And there's a great interview with Albert DeMeo talking to a lady on your channel. That's um, right, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean, though? You got some great, though, videos there. And it's almost like when he was talking to her, though, Albert, he, st- he was, like, still screwed up, like, in the head. Like, you could t- not, like, screwed up is maybe the wrong word, but yeah. he had some mental health, though, issues going on. And if you mm-hmm. think about how terrible everything is, and he didn't know at the time until everything came out, man, if you're just born like that, into that, and it's not your fault at all, man, like, that's just, that sucks. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I, I feel for him. Right. It's got wasn't Albert, though, kind of, like, trying to be in it? Like, wasn't he getting tested by Roy? That's what he says. Yeah, that Roy, they, they, they had the gun with no bullets yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah and he to, picked it up were... to, like, protect him. I mean, that's what he says. Um, He also said, well, we can get into it later, like, post Roy's murder, if you want. We'll talk about other things that he said okay. happened. Yeah. Sure. I know. Like I said to you, like I said to you today on the phone, I'll be jumping back and forth or whatever. All right, yeah, so, so his, just so you know, like, his childhood is, is very sketchy. Um, There is people who have spoken about it. He grew up on the block with a group of brothers known as the Farangi brothers. And later on, after he passes away, um, not much of this testimony is out there, but it will come out soon. You know, you have to really go to court to look at this stuff. But they, they would they would talk a lot about growing up with Roy. And some of them even got involved in some stuff with Roy. And you guys will find out some interesting stuff about them later. Um, one of them became an actor. He's actually in Carlito's way. Um mm-hmm. If you remember at the end, those guys that are chasing Al Pacino, the Italian guys, mm-hmm. yeah. remember the mm-hmm. guy with the glasses and the slick yeah. hair? Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the Parangi brothers. That was a okay. childhood friend of Roy I love Carlito's way. Carlito. And his yeah. brother, his brother <laughs> Richie Farangi was very involved with um, – all evidence suggests that he was very involved with Roy with things, but not with like murder and everything, but – yeah. hustling and criminal activity and he owned he owned a farm upstate where these guys would go and do practice shooting and he roy had a cache of weapons up there and this was on the Farangi farm so there's a lot of moving parts with this crew i mean even like the gemini lounge you know the the owner on paper of that bar is another person he grew up with on that same block the doherty brothers so there's like this whole network of people that are involved yeah there it is right there you want to see what it looks like today? Or maybe this might, I think it's even yeah. a different church today, though, but it's a church. Yeah, it's called the Purpose Life Church now. That was before Purpose Life, Flatlands Church of God. I know. Well, I'm just saying it's just that's that's a little odd. Though. No, that's, yeah, that's man, that's yeah. wild, man. That's yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That 2021 nuts. Flatlands Avenue. One of the Great. most evil spots, man. And that Dracula, though, lived up in the uh, in yeah, the he apartment. lived on the side, the, the last door, which is um. 2084 East uh, something street. I forget. I don't want to jump ahead or anything, but make sure we cover it or or if we can. 
what happened to Dracula, man? Did didn't he just disappear? Oh yeah, we we're gonna get to that. Yeah, let's make sure we get to that. Don't I don't want to forget? Oh yeah, that. yeah. We have paperwork <laughs> and stuff on Dracula and some stuff on Dracula. Cool. Yeah, I sent him. A, I sent him a couple of things on Dracula. Awesome, man. Yeah, cool. Mike, cool. remember when we said on our show and uh, NYC, listen to this. Like, imagine like me and Mike are like, "Hey, man, let's go hit the town," and I'm still drinking, right? And like, you know, we're just fucking tourists, and we're like, "Oh, look at this, Gemini, you roll in <laughs> let's there, have a man. beer. <laughs> oh my god, because you know what I mean. You'd have an attitude because Roy doesn't look tough or whatever. So you're dead. Like I feel, you know what I mean. You're dead. I wonder if that ever happened. I bet you they fucking killed someone who just walked in there. I guarantee it. Could yeah. be. Yeah. 200 bodies they said 200 different dna yeah i mean i don't believe 200 hey you see that guy that commented you see that guy king arthur right there that commented the king arthur yeah 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 he grew up with uh he knew uh harvey chris rosenberg growing up oh wow oh wow yeah. okay yeah. what's going on king cool. thank what's you for up? commenting man that's that's wild carlito's yeah. way ending was like this i love carlito's way and guys, don't think that well, I'm going to. I see all the comments. So I'm definitely going to be getting at you. So, um, all right. So, what? How did Roy end up? Did he know him or not? Um, or did he just get spotted by him? How did Roy end up knowing Nino Gaggi? Yeah. Once again, like this is all like kind of fuzzy still. Like people say they know, but. Or Dominic might have said he knew, but there's this thing where um, apparently he meets him in, in in the late '60s, and this is through this is through cars, you know. Because yeah. Nina was running a, uh, he was working at a used car dealership where he was running it, or some kind of crooked shit like that. So they basically meet through that. And Nina was getting arrested for car operations, you know, going back to the 1950s. You know, he was getting arrested. He was always he was always into cars and. Car theft. Well, Nino seems like the guy, though, that uh, Roy like definitely respected, didn't fuck with, knew he was high oh, ranked. Yeah, yeah I mean, know, he was made yeah way before Roy. I mean, yeah, he's a lot older than him. I mean, he's man, I'm probably fifteen to twenty years older than Roy. At least he was born in the twenties. Uh, oh, okay. is that right? Okay. Roy was born in 1940. So in that big oh, fortress, uh, man, where Dominic Montiglio though lived and died. Uh, yeah, it's crazy, yeah. man. I was just they watching something there too. Day. Yeah, yeah so I, you know, I just want to say, like, with, like the history of how these guys met, like, like you can go by a murder machine or you could listen to Dominic, but a lot of it is, is you know, you'll never really know. I'm not going to say I know because they say he meets Nino in 66. They also say he meets Chris Harvey Rosenberg in the same year of 1966. So I don't know where that comes from. Um, I could expand on some of that Harvey stuff if you want in a little bit. But like I said, the, the, as far as when he meets Nino, I, we could imagine that it's probably somewhere in the late 1960s um, because there is documentation of them at least doing work together in the early seventies, you know? So. And yeah. Roy was big time into the auto theft and stuff like that. And then did Roy, yeah, Roy, yeah, Roy ended up though having his crew before he was made all that stuff. Right. Yeah. They yeah. Well, they started through. muscling in on porn in the early seventies. Yeah, really? That's, that's right. how they kind of, yeah. Him and yeah. Nino. And actually again. the ice man Kuklinski who says that he was with Roy and that's bullshit. He was actually an extortion victim of Roy's back in the day from the porn stuff who um, I forget the cop's name, but he's on Ross Brodar's Lynchpin and Bensonhurst explaining it. But uh, yeah. And then he yeah, only Kuklinski. went into Gemini to buy a gun. What's yeah, that? I mean, Kuklinski lied so much, and um, Philip yeah. Carlo like repeated all his lies in the book. And there's a point in that book when Philip Carlo is talking about people being as if they're alive when they'd already been dead already, with dates like in yeah, you know, yeah. with the porn stuff. There's there's times when Richard Kuklinski makes claim that he's getting beat up by Joseph Dracula Guglielmo. But in that year that he says it happened, Dracula was in prison. You know, th that it's just it's just the funniest fucking book ever. And with Sammy the Bull, though, that they were involved with killing the cop. And he's like, yeah, he gave me the phone. Like, there wasn't even phones around at that time. And they also said, though, I think it was a different even gun. And you want to know what we were like? We were talking about, about teams. I was in rehab with a guy who wanted to get him, like, tattooed. I'm like, dude, he's not. And, like, I showed him and proved it. But he's still like, no, I don't care. <laughs> he is. Like, all right, man. You know what I mean? Like there, there is a fan club for these guys, and it's fucking sure. nuts. Oh you yeah. Know? So now let's we're with Roy's with you know not you know Nino's probably noticed him from the cars. He's got his crew, and uh, what a crew though it was. Yeah. I mean, we got uh, Roy yeah. obviously right there with Nino. Then you know there's Dragula, Anthony Center. Isn't he getting out soon? 
Yes. I don't know how true that is. I mean, I don't know why. I don't know where the source. I mean, the source of that is the the uh, borough of prisons website. Now, as to why that might be, there's no evidence as to why it is that's been released so far. Um, and then you got Pat Testa, and there there's Chris Rosenberg right there, who was almost yeah. like a stunder Roy, right? Then Roy looking like he didn't want to whack yeah. him out. Yeah, All I mean, this is only you know a few. I mean, twenty something guys got indicted as members of the Roy DeMeo crew. Yeah, yeah. You see the Vito just... Arena dude? Yep. Yep. Okay, I think that guy got killed here in Houston, man. Yeah, he did. He got killed here in Houston. Yeah, that's yeah, correct. Yeah. And the guy next to him, Henry Borelli, I found out would get sick though when um, like he wasn't one of the ones who would cut up the bodies. That's like what I saw about Nikki Featherstone. Um, how like they'd kill you in a second, but with the cutting up of the bodies. So we didn't even explain that too. And I'm sure everyone knows, but if anyone was new here, like when these guys would do something called the Houdini, which they would just chop everyone up. I don't know if they got it from the Westies or Royce or whatever, though, because they did it with Ruby Stey, and then they were like, oh, um, and then they ended up coming together. But we'll get to that. But um. Yeah, they would just chop everyone up and fucking throw them in dumpsters. And wasn't their first chopping victim? What was his name? Andre Katz, right? So they say that's the first one, Andre Katz. Um, as as to if Roy was doing it beforehand, you know, I'm not sure. You know, Roy has a murder, at least one murder on record before that murder of Paul Rothenberg. And then there's an I there is a inkling that he killed a guy by the by the name of Joseph. Uh, Joseph Umili, but I don't know the full details on that as of now. So with Andre Katz, you know, that that's a murder that one of the murders that Joey Tess and Anthony Center would would actually be found guilty of later, many years later. Um, originally, Testa and Henry Borelli get arrested for that murder when they do a little funny fiction with the witnesses and the trials and everything. So they get off on that murder. And at the time that murder is committed, Anthony Center and Joey Testa are 20 years old. So at 20 years old, by everything we know, they're dismembering bodies. That's nuts. With man. with Roy DeMeo. That's nuts. Man, how about on that? What 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 do you think the 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 whole do you think they were just lured to him, you know, like just following him like a Pied Piper doing that, or just trying to prove to get into the scene? Or what do you think, man? Well, I think a lot of them grew up around that scene. Like I said, it was a lot. It was a lot more of a grimier scene where they grew up. I believe in like Canarsie. I mean, King Arthur could probably vouch for this. Like, you know, you, like I said before, you, you, you know, that doesn't mean you become a, a, a mob murderer just because you have a Canarsie. I'm not making excuses. No, right, have, right. But I think that they grew up kind of just influenced by it, and they all. It's one of those things where these guys all came together, and it, it's something that probably will never happen again where a group of guys come together like that to create like this murderous crew like of killers who were all around the same yeah. age coming up in the twenties and just killing people, you know, and working with Roy DeMeo. Like I think, I think Jerry Capisi referred to Roy DeMeo once as the Fagan of Flatlands, you know, like Fagan, Oliver Twist, taking yeah, all the yeah. young kids to do the Right, crimes. right. That's what I'm saying. Like a pie, pie. We had a serial killer here, man, in Houston. Thanks, G, from Ireland. I had to throw yeah, that Ireland, out. Ireland, what's up, Ireland. man? What's up, sure. G? I hope you subscribe up, man. I love Ireland. My parents, oh, G78, my, folk, my man. Yeah, my okay. folks are going to Ireland on November 6th. Oh, um, so G78 is it. the man, yeah. Thanks for being up, G78. He's in yeah, Ireland. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. But, but what I was saying is we had a serial killer here, man, that did brought in like two young guys and basically had them bringing him victims you know what i'm saying he had them bringing them victims and and i just think to myself how in the world and and one of them ends up killing the guy wow one of them ends up because he got mad they the, the dude wanted to kill a girl or something and he wasn't with it and he ends up getting the guy's gun and killing him and, and they have That's footage crazy. of it. They have footage of of him talking on a one of those old school police phones that's like hooked in a, like a old car. You know what I'm saying? Calling his mom and stuff. It's nuts, man. But I'm just saying yeah. the mindset of somebody that's following that. You know what I'm saying? That's of following course, yeah, dude, yeah. It know? takes it takes uh, yeah, it takes an interesting group of people. But I guess you know they're all feeding off each other at the end of the day, and. You know, they all have a different role. You know, not all of them are cutting bodies up. Not all of them are killing anyone at all. I mean, almost like a gang mentality. I just learned this, though. So his name, though, isn't Christo. It's uh, 
Um, Harvey. Uh, yeah, she asked. Uh, Ro asked. Oh, wait. I think I screwed up the uh, chat. Well, Rian, did everyone call him Harvey? And he said, yes, he was always Harvey when I know. So, Kristen, is, it's Harvey. And Roy right. called him Harvey, too, right? I think he preferred to be called Chris. I don't think he would want to be called Harvey because he didn't want to be known as a Jewish guy. Mm. Okay. Right, well, no, because right. okay, got it though. Because no, well, he said though that he laughs when people say Chris because he knew him as Harvey. That's all. So okay, so some people probably called him Chris. Others knew him as Harvey. Hey, listen. I mean, I'll give you guys a story. And to go back to um, you know, whether Roy met Chris in 1966 or not, or Harvey in 1966 or not, you know, my, a friend of mine who has appeared on my channel, who I speak to, and who I want to do a lot of work with, is Peter Lafrosia. Okay. Who is a guy in the Roy DeMeo crew, Pete the Pick LaFrosha. He's in Murder Machine. He got indicted with them. They tried to pin murders on him. Uh, he he went away for five years for the stolen car thing, right? Because he was a major part of the, the uh, Empire Boulevard operation. He's right? still alive. Yeah, Pete. Still alive on my channel as of a week ago, answering questions from people. And, yeah. you know... He, he was friends with Harvey in the 1960s, you know, and... He says he does not remember Roy being around. Now, he would tell me stories about even like King Arthur confirmed, I believe to me, you know, talking about what kind of car Harvey had at that time. And, you know, all those guys were like car crazy. So if a lot of those guys were into fast cars, the junkyard scene, how to steal cars. So he was friends with Harvey when they were like in their late teens, Pete LaFrosha and Harvey Chris Rosenberg. And Pete told me that, yeah, Harvey was always ashamed of being Jewish. Mm -hmm. Pete told me that one time there was a, a tough kid in the neighborhood who happened to be Jewish. And this is a story that's not really out there from Pete, that he was in the car with Harvey, Chris Rosenberg. And he always had this kind of beef with like some Jewish kid that was tough. And the kid knew that Harvey was trying to be Italian, trying to be something he's not. And according to Pete, this tough dude takes a slice of pizza and smashes it in Harvey's face one day while they're sitting in the car. So that would be, I think, Pete telling me that story just to convey how much Chris was kind of like a wannabe mm. and that he was trying to be Italian and this and that. Um, Harvey plots to kill LaFrosia later, which doesn't work out for Harvey. But, you know, so I'm sure Pete likes telling that story. But you know, I think that gives you an idea of. No, I don't believe he was ever called Harvey. He wanted to be called Chris. And that's it. Mm. Yeah, and like man. it was it and did some was, was he he knew about Roy and like did he want to get or did they just like meet out of nowhere because they became very close. Yeah, so Harvey was selling drugs and that there and he was into the cars. They were all like stealing cars at a young age, all into fast cars. So that's how they more than likely met too. Like you know, people can say that they know for sure how these guys actually met. That they were like like murder machine. Oh. They met in a parking lot in 1966 and they were still <laughs> like, how do you know? But who told right. you that? Did Dominic yeah. Montiglio tell you that? Because like, I love Dom, but how the fuck would he know? He might've yeah. just heard it somehow. Um, I don't know. This is all, you know, it's, you'll never right, really right. know, but the actual you, documentation. Yeah. But you could assume it's through, you know, Harvey was selling drugs at that time. He was getting into trouble. They were stealing cars. He was friends by all accounts with, with the Gemini twins and guys like Peter LaFrosia already. Yeah. No, Carlos, not related at all. <laughs> not at all. I don't even think William DeMeo is Italian. <laughs> I'm not related at all to Roy DeMeo. <laughs> I'm not related to him at all. <laughs> Wait, is William DeMeo the actor? Yes. yes. The one that yeah, talks like this. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't yeah. think because, and I just said that because he said something about Larry Mazza, like calling out Larry Mazza, and Larry Mazza said something like, how could he say this to me? The guy's not even Italian. You know, he's just an actor, but that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. Or he's like half Italian, half Jewish, maybe. Oh, no, it's like a fact, that. though. Yeah, no, but it's, it, it's, I don't even think it's his name. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hollywood, so, man. Hollywood. Loomis, have you got Irish ancestry? Absolutely. Darty, D O U G H E R T Y from Kerry, Ireland. Absolutely. And uh, my great grandparents, who I got to meet, came over from Ellis Island. And uh, they lived like a, one of them lived, I think, 101, and the other one was like 99. But they were, uh, wow. They lived, outlived their own kids. They were fat. They were just different, man. They boiled their water. You know what I mean? Dang. He was a big supporter of the cause, too, of the IRA and stuff. Dang. But, uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, it was just like normal though for them. Like when they would come right. in, though, to go up there and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's the ancestry though. D O U G A G R T Y Darty from Kerry, Ireland. Thank you, and they'll actually be out there like in two weeks. Yeah, and I just want to let you guys know because like there is people here like King Arthur and people who grew up around there in those areas. You know, I could only speak from my opinion, what I might have heard from sources from other people, all of my independent research outside of that book, Murder Machine, um, you know, and just getting an idea maybe of kind of how Brooklyn was at that time, just because that's where my family's from. But obviously, look at me, I wasn't around there. So I could only assume, um, yeah. you know, but this is a crew that I've studied. I, I dedicate a lot of time to looking into and, and studying and trying to learn a lot about it. Right, right. Yeah. King Arthur says, thank you, Roro and uh, Carlos. King Arthur goes, hey, NYC, I do believe that there was a neighbor on my block who beat the crap out of Harvey one day for poking fun of his sister. There you go. Wow. There you go. So he was right around and growing up. Same wow. block. Is that where they live? Same neighborhood. Farmer, how we doing? I was getting some of these out of the way because a lot of them came in. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, down. What's the fish? Fucking fish. PT, here we go. All the neighborhoods back then were a web. Almost everyone knew who was into street things. It was easy to make connections to other street people. Yeah, like, you know, where I'm from, it was more like we look up at, like, whoever the baddest dude was or whatever, and it would just be like that. But when you're around mafia and, like, you know, I I could imagine, like, hey, man, yeah. that guy's made guy, that guy, if it's just surrounded around, you know, it's a very, very enticing, probably sure, sexy man. and fucking, you know what I mean? Because that you see them with the chicks and money, they're just standing there. And when, they're, when you're born right there and you see that, I right. can absolutely see how people go. I, I heard it. See, like you're people out there would either be a priest, fireman, cop, or a gangster. Yeah, if you if you're lured to street stuff, you're going to be lured to whatever is around you. And if you got dudes like that, that's what you're going to be attracted to and what you're going to gravitate towards. You know, if you can. And you you're know. real young, yeah. You know, so it's just. And you're. I remember my mom would be like, "Don't smoke." What did I do? I got a fucking almost like a carton of smokes with my buddy Carmony, and we fucking went to the mountain and smoked. <laughs> so you know, you just never know. You, you know yeah. you how, know, but it it's got to be enticing. Sure. Yeah, man. Especially you nope. see older dudes like. Think about it, man. No matter what it's scene, you're in, the 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 older ones you see that you look up to, that's what you're trying to be like. You know. And so you see cats like that, that nice cars or this or that, or they got pool or they can, you know, walk around like they're, you know, on top of the world. Nobody's going to say nothing to them. That's what you want to be like if that's what you're, you know, attracted absolutely. to, you know? Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. And then it's probably like a test. Like, you know, that's why I think like there are so many nuts because they're like, no, I'm going to outdo this guy. Like, right. I'm gonna do these you know, they're trying to outdo and this and they're just fucking nuts man that's got to be those scary then i think a lot of people could have been bought because i don't think they're all sociopaths i just think some of them knew they had to kill they wanted to do it and after they killed then they're probably like got comfortable with it and stuff like that it was like i don't nothing. think every one of them was just a born sociopath nah. you know? no i don't no. think so yeah no i mean no nice g yeah i hope you subscribe up man and uh email us and i love to talk to you grew up in belfast would kill we'll get north belfast right it's wild out there man wild um, and then let's just the last one. Bro, bro, people talk. Mr. Gribbs lived in neighborhood. We all knew what he did, and he wasn't a florist. Carmel Monty, yeah, just uh, had that as the front. What, like, you ever see the movie The Town with the Florist? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. I, I, I fucking love that. That guy's and a good it, actor. I, I don't remember his name. But... Oh, I know what he just passed. He's fucking. Oh, did fantastic. he pass away? I didn't know that. Yeah, like a year and a half ago, around COVID. In my neighborhood, some guy beat up three guys because they touched his girlfriend's butt. So you were right there. What's up, Carlos? See, I, Carlos. Carlos from over on your channel. Carlos Seja. Uh, I don't know. I've yeah. seen him in FBS's chat, FBO Sicilian's chat. Thanks for being uh, here, Carlos. I don't know if I've ever Carlos. seen him. I don't know if I've ever it's seen really him. getting yeah. fake. Thank you very much, my man. That's a new one, too. Hope you guys subscribe and like the video. So, uh, all right. So now DeMeo's got his crew, and now he's definitely doing stuff and giving Nino money and uh, – you know, trying to impress Don Nino and um but they got the Gemini Lounge and what did what would what were they like you know really known for? Like they would kill people in Dracula's apartment, which was connected to it, right? Yeah, well Dracula didn't didn't get into that apartment, I believe, to like the mid seventies or something like that. So it wasn't like Dracula was always there. Dracula, I mean, I sent you his criminal record if you want to put it up. Um, you know, 
he he was a guy who had a lot of by all accounts a lot of a lot of problems i mean there you can see how old he was he was born in 1927 um and you guys got to realize too like he was born in 27 so in the 1970s and 80s you know this guy looks like he's 75 years old you know what i'm saying so he didn't age well but no. you can see he's born in 1927 he was born in italy um he's getting arrested for felony assault uh promotion of gambling uh if you go to the other one He's got a record that dates back to the 1940s. And like I said, it's assault. Um, I think um, unlawful entry he's got. And he's got oh, yeah, look promoting at gambling. He's even got gambling records. So there's an inkling that maybe he was running his own gambling operation, of course. But it's all going to go to shit for real to for Dracula in 1970 when he gets into, as you can see there, a bank robbery. This is an incident that happens on Long Island. These guys rob a bank, two of his cohorts. They actually Damn. flip a car on the side of the highway. They get arrested. Convicted in after 71. Yeah. He's so whacked out that during trial, he keeps... This is also not really... It's not in the book at all. They don't really expand on his criminal record. During trial, he's screaming. He's constantly interrupting. At one point, he throws a water carafe towards the jury. Uh, at another point, he throws something at one of the prosecutors. He's completely nuts, right? <laughs> Damn. So I this didn't is, know that. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who's pretty deranged. I mean, and like I said, my <laughs> friend writing a book will expand greatly on him, but he's a deranged individual. And by the mid 70s, he gets out of jail. He, you know, he goes to jail for that bank robbery. And then his cousin, Roy DeMeo, happens to be his cousin. What's going on in that family? Uh, <laughs> and he, he lets him live in that apartment that's behind the Gemini. And, you know, by all accounts, Joseph Dracula Guglielmo, based on living in that apartment ends up of course committing murders with the crew um and he's the third one from the top folks third, yeah, sorry, right. I, thought, I thought i uploaded a picture though but you got roy nino and then there's dracula the old man he was the bartender there at the gemini as well correct uh he might have tended bar i mean i don't know i can't say for sure if he was like a regular bartender there um there's I could he probably sheet, did. Though, yeah. He probably did. It amazed me with a lot of these guys' rap sheets. Like, how the hell did they even get out of prison with a lot of this shit? Oh, back then, yeah. I mean, these guys, I mean, I've seen worse than that. I mean, some, you know, nuts shit. Um, right. Yeah, back in those days, too, though, like, you know, before the Rico, before all that stuff, though, time wasn't as, you know what I mean? But then it, the Rico is what killed it, I think. Yeah. That's where people are really cooperating and looking at big time time, you know, especially with drugs and shit like that. Yeah. So, Dracula then is this guy's fascinating because as people, I'm not sure if he's no, nobody knows what happened to Dracula. The last supposed thing was that wasn't it that Roy's son dropped him off at an airport? That's what Albert says. Is that true? I mean, I guess we have to believe what Albert says. Um, there's some people believe that he was killed uh somewhere down south. Um if you look at the FBI files, I mean, there's all types of reports of him being spotted here, him being spotted there. How reliable are those reports? I don't know. I mean, he was considered a fugitive for a while before they. A lot of them probably aren't, though, because like with Whitey Bulger, they were always like, yeah, they're there and it yeah. wasn't him. And Drag Dracula could be mistaken from an old guy. So you can't really trust those when the FBI right, says right. that. Um, there was an idea that maybe he escaped back to Italy where he was born. That was a possibility. Um, but couple of people believe he was killed down south somewhere i um i can't say for sure i could say that he disappears not long after they do a raid of uh the gemini lounge and they take a lot of evidence out of there out of the basement out of the um apartment uh they find uh, shell casings and walls you know they take stuff out of the drain pipes you know they they just take a bunch of shit um i could send you guys if you ever want to see um everything that they took out of that place oh hell yeah but, yeah, for no, sure, man. I'm actually coming out with a publication, a book for my channel that'll be out hopefully within a couple months. Yeah, um, awesome, man. NYC I believe Crime that Spot Volume the... One will deal with the, the Demayo crew. NYC, oh, I believe though that you're the one that told me this because remember I was like, because I didn't know the dates. I was like, well, they're related. So when Paul put the hit on Roy, he might have just been like, take Dragul out too because you know they're related. So that's what I was thinking. But Roy was killed. And then Dracula was still alive after that when they raided and everything like that. So he they was still living in that apartment. He didn't. Disappear so we know they didn't go immediately then after him though. So 
there is a chance though that I mean now he's gone, but I mean it's Norfolk, nuts that he just disappeared like that, man. Disappeared, That's like, crazy, like, man. Boom. Yeah. Gone. Did he not have any family at all? I mean, I, I'm sure they weren't like he had a wife and kids in there. I mean, the family he had up, was, but... you know, his extended family, right? Boy, no, like and, and whoever immediate. it was. As far okay, as I yeah. know, no, no kids, no wife, nothing like that. Yeah, he got Roy's a lot though. Even with the Cuban that we'll get to though, that was him and Roy, right? Who chased down the kid and killed him? That is correct. But that was the, one of the murders. Yeah, guys. That the, the yeah, Fed said that he did. Yeah. Rosenberg with the Cubans when he killed the, the, on a drug deal. What? Yeah, tell us about that. Like, what happened with that? So that was just Chris. You know, he had a drug deal. This was in nineteen. 19- 79 i believe this was where he had a drug deal with these cubans um and he got in these guys that he knew for a while which was uh the padniks which was a father and son duo that ended up getting killed guy by the name of uh william serrano and two unidentified as far as the uh thank you g two unidentified cubans as far as the feds are concerned and instead of doing the drug deal he ends up murdering them Chris Rosenberg. This causes a whole thing. As many of you know, he uses the name Chris DeMeo and it becomes a whole crazy thing where Castellano finds out about everything that's happening and he basically has to kill uh, Harvey Rosenberg. And right. from there, he becomes very paranoid and he unfortunately kills an 18 year old vacuum uh, salesman in Long Island. Right, he chases right. him down and catches up to him near MacArthur Airport or in uh, around Farmingdale, Long Island. Murders him in cold blood. They shoot him to death. And uh, this is something that gets back to to the, the police in a sense. They kind of think Roy did it. They're watching his house after this in Massapequa. They're parked up by his house. According to Albert, they were there nonstop. Um, but, you know, this is the depravity of, of, of these individuals. Mm of just not not having any reservations about murdering people right you know um and you murder an 18 year old kid oh i want to bring up something else i want to bring up something else because it really pisses me off when you know because i don't know if you guys also know in um in i believe 19 i think it was 1977 they killed a 19 year old girl as a part of the murder of a guy by the name of john quinn i don't know if you guys are familiar with john quinn yeah 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 so I they learned this from they you. kill his 19 year old girlfriend Sherry Golden in 1977. Oh, yeah, I heard that. He kills a uh, 18 year old vacuum salesman Dom, um, Dominic Ragucci in 79. Right. So these are like pretty bad events. Now, according to what said, this would get back to Castellano. Right. Uh fish. I didn't just read the book, so you know. Oh, well, don't I worry about it. Fish. fish just likes to try. Yeah, yeah I mean, an first of all, Fish, I have many sources <laughs> for what I said. And a lot of the stuff, no, because I have to defend myself because people like this idiot think because they grow up somewhere, they know somebody that that means that I might not know somebody because I'm younger or I might not know the story for whatever reason. I've talked to numerous people. I have somebody who was indicted with them in my phone that I talk to often somebody who was indicted with them, who sat next to Paul Castellano in trial, who tells me things I could probably never repeat. So before you start running your fucking mouth, like a lot of people do to content creators, you think you can talk to us a certain way. You think you could (laughs) say certain things just because you're some fuck from some fucking neighborhood because you walked the streets of Brooklyn. That means something about you. doesn't mean a fucking thing. My family's from Brooklyn too. Okay. I grew up in New York city. I've seen things. So just because you grew up somewhere doesn't mean you're anybody. And you're probably a fucking nobody. So how about that? You're probably a fucking Rock and nobody. let's go. All right? <laughs> so no, because I'm sticking up for all content creators that want to come on here and talk about American history. And you don't know what sources I have. You don't know who the fuck I've talked to. You don't know who I've had dinners with. You don't know I had dinners with fucking detectives that helped bring these motherfuckers down. That I have and all the work that you do, though, too, man, and all that. Like, you know, this man right here that's in the fucking book is in my fucking phone book, and I talk to him weekly. And last, he just wants to react to this. How is it a rap when it's already public information? Yeah, it's already public. No, I'm not offended. Like, I'm not, he could call me whatever I want, he could say whatever the fuck it is. I mean, it's you know, it is what it is. No, I I don't know Fish. I don't know the Irish is right, but he's another faceless, nameless motherfucker who comes on YouTube. 
who thinks that they can talk to content creators a certain way. Meanwhile, they've never done a fucking thing in their life. Why don't you come on here, Fish, and get some subs and tell your bullshit story and see how well it goes? Okay, right, bro. Well, you know what? So though, he's loving this. Though. This is what he wants. So we're giving him like. No, I know this is this is what he wants. But I'm sticking up for all content creators. Whether you have a hundred subs, <laughs> fucking forty thousand subs, fifty thousand subs, nameless, faceless motherfuckers think they can come on here, tell you that you're this, tell you that you're yeah. that. But just oh my god, I walked in the streets of Brooklyn. That's where I grew up. Nobody gives a fuck, bro. <laughs> Dude, your voice cares, bro. My whole fucking family's from there. Who gives a fuck? So we just hit one hour. Doesn't and matter, not... bro. Okay, doesn't matter. Just... Okay, you are nameless no. and faceless. Drop the link for this guy and tell him to show his face right now. Come on, Drop the link no, and show your fucking face, face, fish. How's that? Let's see All your right, face. Guys, you're not no, we're, just, uh, we're still rocking and rolling. We hit the hour mark, so uh, please like Go and subscribe. Ahead. No, no, no. I'm sick of like this. This what? fucking stupid. This well, no, stupid I'm trying not to run the show. Yeah. Try... No. Actually, come don't. on, bring him on if he wants. Actually, to don't on, drop the link. Let's continue. No dropping the fucking, link. I know he's not going to show his face anyway because he's well, a fucking. Could you guys hear me or no? This fucking moron. Could you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh, okay. All right, we hit the hour. All right, so when we're done, I'll tell I'll tell Loomis to send me your ugly face since your face is on YouTube. All right, but yeah, guys. All right, fucking please. moron. So, I grew um, up in Brooklyn. Yeah, so did my fucking uncle and my whole family. Who gives a fuck? Hang tight, guys. This is our first a little commercial break, though, for Saturday's episode. We'll be right back with NYC Crime Spot. Right, I'm What's up? Tune in on Saturday on Mafia Truth. We're going to have a debate show on who will win between Iron Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali. It's going to be kind of a touchy show for some people. We've got some special guests coming on, professional boxers, trainers, um, just other people that we respect their opinion on combat sports. So make sure and tune in. We're going to try to give a good, solid debate on both sides. Tyson versus Ali. Make sure and leave in the comments which one you would choose. Who do you think and maybe why you think they would win. So we'll see you on Saturday. Tyson versus Ali. All right, we are now yeah, back. We're past it. We're past it. Yeah, we are fine. now back though with uh, and, uh, NYC. Just so you know, though, I always just I, I'm trying just just to ignore that because that's what they want. You know, no, no, no so, yeah, no. It's not even about it's it's not even about um. He can call, he call me a family, call me whatever he wants. I've been saying this whole time that there's plenty of things that no one will ever know that I can't say is true or not as true. I can only say from what I believe and what I've been told. But um, he shows his face. I'll drop the link. As far as um. No, I don't, he can come to my channel. And I'll, I'll actually have him on my show if he wants. And we'll talk about his, his stupid fucking story. But we can continue on. Yeah, if you want. let's continue. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking said this whole time that, you know, there's things we'll never know. I don't claim to know to know anything. Yeah, but don't, don't even don't even don't even. Like no, man, you don't have yet. to justify to nobody, man. Yeah, you're, you're you're researching what you've done is good. I mean, no matter what, man, people are going to listen, man. Once people start hating like that, it just means you're doing something right. So fuck them. No, so, the, and the thing is, what you know, what what it is is like. There's a lot of people that think because they grew up in a certain zip code that that means that there's somebody that it means anything. There's kids that I know that because they think we we grew up in Queens that we're tougher or we're this or that. It doesn't mean anything, and YouTube is infested with those people. But you know, it is what it is. Because they're from there, or I'm from New York. Yeah, no, I know how people act from New York. Believe me, I have drive a lot of friends from New York though. But a lot of people just be like, I'm from New York, so that means that gives them status right away. Get the fuck going. It's every hey man, there's people that can handle themselves from everywhere, and there's people that can't handle themselves. That was one of my questions I asked Scott after he did 27 years. I, we were talking about fighting. I said, How about fighting, man? And a lot of dudes really handle themselves. He said, Man, contrary to popular demand, everybody in prison can't fight. Period. Thanks, Pete. The smallest dude, maybe the baddest dude, and the biggest dude, maybe not able to crush a grape, man. So, oh, yeah, you don't know what people, yeah, that's why yeah, you don't know what the that's next guy can everywhere, do. man. But that, don't worry. I, and then also too, um, wait, what did I just want to say? Uh, thank you, Lefties out of my room. I had something to say, but I forgot to my comment. But like I said, uh, let's just let's just stick with the show. Don't worry about that bullshit. Um, yeah. All right. So we were talking about Dragula now. So now everything though with Dragula though, we all know. Like we we don't know. It's still a mystery. We don't know if he was killed. Albert says he dropped him off at the airport. And my thing is, you know, Albert wouldn't be a suspect or wouldn't kill him. So why would he just make that up? 
you know what I'm saying? Oh, no, yeah. Of, I mean, I don't know why he would make that up at all. I have no, I mean, that's what I said. That's another thing where it's like you can't say that that's true or not true. You can only go by what people say, you know? Um, <laughs> it's a church now. There's like a bunch of different things. Like detectives on the case believe something else. I know for a fact that there's some detectives that believe other things in reference to that, that he was actually murdered down south somewhere. There's mm. detectives that actually believe that, that worked on the case. Um, whether they're correct or not, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that obviously that conflicts with what Albert said, unless, you know, he got on a plane and didn't leave the country. I find it hard to believe that they would let him, leave, you know, on a plane, being that they raided the Gemini and being that he's a part of, ultimately became a part of the indictment. You know, he was indicted, but I don't know. It's It's pretty... Crazy police work by uh, the feds and the NYPD who are working together on this. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, okay. So now we were also talking about how Dragula was involved though with this, with the, um, I'll just say it from the beginning. So Roy was very paranoid after Christo killed some Cubans and the Cubans wanted proof and wanted it in the newspaper and everything. So, and Roy did, cause it's easy. He was like a son to him, right? Roy didn't want to do it at first. Could you kind of explain uh, the murder of Chris? I got to fix this light. Well, you see, this is, this is funny once again. And like I said, it's important that we don't pretend to know what happens here. So the murder of Harvey Chris Rosenberg. Now, the events of why that happened, that comes from Dominic Montiglio, who was not even there. Um, and he heard it from whoever he heard it from that. Did you hear what I said, Loomis, about Dominic yeah, I hear Montiglio? You. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I mean, the, the murder of Chris Rosenberg, you know, that intel comes from Dominic, who wasn't even there, right? Oh, is it? That's where it comes from? The whole way how that happened. Where is Roy, that the only real like yeah, account of it? The, because okay. based on the people who were actually there. Gotcha. And who's the person, though, that said what the Gemini method was? And the Gemini method was Chris is waiting in his underwear. Someone walks in, right? Roy pops him in the head, puts a towel over his head. Chris comes, stabs the heart. Yeah. And then um, they put the body in the, you know, wait a little bit. Because they stab the heart so the blood doesn't fucking go everywhere. And yeah. then they uh, gut him. And these guys are eating pizza, like, right there in the same room. I like the story that Dominic says, though, when he walked in there and there's two fucking dead bodies. I don't mean to smile. And he's and Dominic's like, what the fuck is that? Roy goes, don't worry. They're not staying for dinner. Yeah. Just yeah. right there eating, man. Like, like all oh, the stink. The, the oh. smell, man. Just that, you know, can you imagine? Oh. Just, geez. Yeah. Now, so intro. Oh, real yeah, quick. Yeah. I forgot to say this on the break. Steve, I don't know if you're in here right now, but you're the winner of the knife from yesterday. So, Steve, um, get in touch with me. And Mike, and we'll send you a knife. Yeah, buddy. we'll send it out, man. Yeah, we need. All that. right, go ahead, go ahead, NYC. The Sorry, fucking bro. knife. He's <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, what was the question? So we were talking about um, uh, still about oh, Harvey. The, the, you said the Gemini method. Oh, Where did that Gemini come from? Method. Yeah. Oh yeah, I talked about fifty-five things though, right then and there. But I'm sorry, Chris's um whole murder situation though. So then Roy was paranoid. He killed the driver with. Dragula, they chased him like five miles or something, shooting at him. Yeah, and it was, ended up being a carpet salesman who was just trying to save money for college. And uh, man, that's fucking tough. And according to Roy's son Albert, like he said, his father was all messed up over it, which was interesting because I'm like, oh wow, does he have that kind of compassion? But then though, it's like no. But the in the Gemini, they, they didn't just kill people that they were ordered to hit; they killed a lot more people. They were doing murder for hires and everything, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, I think most of their murders that they say they did were, were probably not um, authorized by Paul Castellano. I would say most exactly. of them. Were, most of them were probably now. As far as what Sammy says, where they would kill for sport because some guy was drunk and he was the last one in the bar. I don't see any evidence for that. I mean, I think if I had to guess, I mean, if I had to imagine, he was probably trolling Sammy. Maybe. I mean, it sounds so. His coffee boy. First of all, who's his coffee boy that had six murders? Which yeah. one of those guys that you just saw is a coffee boy? Like, what does that even mean? When you know, so I don't, I don't. There's a lot of stuff that I don't believe when it comes to that stuff, only because like there's no evidence. Like Sal Polisi with the Charles Corniglia thing. Like, where's the evidence for something stupid right. like that? I don't believe that bullshit. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but, that's. Uh, yeah, Polisi wasn't even like really around him though, and like you said, well, I don't think would have been in the book. To be book honest with you, I really stuff. don't think Sammy was, but. I think Sammy the Bull met Roy the Mayo. He was around. Oh, of a lot course, of he guys. met him, but I don't think he was around him. I don't think any of those guys were. Like, well, all, I know like, for a fact, though. What's his name? Was around him. Uh, Mike, what's his name? He was the underboss, and they blew him up. 
Frankie DeChico. DeChico. He was absolutely yeah. around Roy. Well, the feds and, believe that the feds believe that he did a murder with them in New in Manhattan. Like there, right? And then no, the not Mayo. even that one. Another one. Okay. Yeah. Got yeah. it. There was another one that they think that they did with them in the Gemini. But when I say not around them, I don't mean like they weren't in meetings. Like, but I'm but I'm saying like not like hanging around with them, like being like with them. That's what I mean by that. Right, right. Just always, always with them, like like part of a crew or something. Yeah. Right. Harvey's murder was definitely front page news. I remember telling the neighbor that I think. Well, what they did was after they killed him, I don't know how true this is. They said that Roy shot and he couldn't finish the murder. And then then one of the twins shot him. And then they put him in a car and they machine gunned the car so that it would make the news. And it's the Cubans had absolute proof. They didn't say just whack him. They wanted the proof, and yes. uh, they uh, they succeeded. You know, going back to Charles Carniglia, we had a guy on man that uh, did did some time with, did a pretty good amount of time, got close with him, right? And so he uh, he said that uh, Char- Charlie told him a lot that guys would throw his name. Uh, in for different stuff, you know, like pin, you know, saying, yeah, I was around him. He did this. I saw him do this. I, I saw, try, you know, that testified against him and stuff. And he, he said he told him and straight up that, you know, he goes, it's just, you know, they constantly people who weren't around me and said I did stuff didn't. And I mean, I don't think he had any reason at that point. Oh, he's yeah. already doing life. He's got no reason to lie to this guy about it you know what i'm saying but he said well, charlie yeah he said though that some people that are on youtube right now saying this or that like they he wasn't they weren't around him at they all. weren't around him at all man oh i can charlie believe that yeah yeah I, I, believe so, I mean that's that's a guy a real guy who actually for, you know yeah. said stuff like that so it's like geez, i can believe man. that yeah yeah, yeah right. we, we're finding out a lot of new stuff like now the, the the people were like involved with that life and stuff but they were involved though with like charlie or like you know as high up as some some say and yeah. uh, that's got straight from Charlie Carnelia's mouth, you know? Right, right. And the guy has no reason to say that. I mean, none. No, none no, 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 no. Definitely not. Hey, NYC, King Arthur, do you have private email address that I can email you at? Or can I ask Quentin what that is? Because I still do have his email address that he gave me. Yeah, it's just nyccrimespot at gmail.com. The same one Fish could use. All right, let's not talk about that. And- <laughs> I'm just fucking around. It's all good. And also, guys, um, if you want to get in touch with us, well, please subscribe, hit like on this. And um, we're going to change our email. But for now, there it is. Screenshot it. If you want to get in touch with me or Mike directly, just email that one right there. And um, we will absolutely uh, be there. So if anyone has any questions, ask questions still. And we'll continue. All right. So, yeah. So they got the, Are we still at the part? He, he got. So that's all done. You know what year that was and how much time like Roy was still on the street for after Chris, after Harvey or Chris's murder. Yeah. Well, that's a good point because a lot of people say this claim that like, Oh, you know, he killed like Dominic Ragucci. That was 1979, but they make the claim that, Oh, that was the last straw. You know, he just had to go after that. You know what I'm saying? They say, Oh, Castellano had enough. Um, I've heard people repeat that numerous times, but, Obviously, that's not the case because Roy doesn't get murdered till 1983. So that wasn't even enough to get rid of him, you know, yeah. killing 18 year old high schoolers, killing a 19 year old teenage girl, you know, in 1977. Um, all people of these don't get depraved- murdered. Life is easy as people might think. I'm telling you, just because yeah. we hear the backstory, like it, it really takes a lot, like, you know, to kill. They took it very seriously. It wasn't like they're just out there every day doing it. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Go ahead. No, that's fine. I mean, it's very depraved stuff. And when, you know, losers, you know, call people fanboys because they look into this stuff. I'm telling you right now, it's it's absolute depravity. Uh, you know, you say Anthony Center is up for prison. I say, fuck him. He shouldn't get out of prison. There's no reason for somebody like him to get out of prison. And I don't think he is getting out of prison. I think that's not going to happen. If it does happen. Uh, listen, I went on Pacer and I don't know if you guys have Pacer accounts. Anybody that wants to research mob or crimes get a pacer account you look up federal documents you can get all types of stuff if anyone has a pacer account out there go to pacer right now type in anthony center you're not going to find any recent news there any recent appeals any recent things about past indictments there's nothing there there's no thing that says he won an appeal 
there's nothing that says even there was an appeal lately. So I don't know why it says he's getting out unless he's really sick and we don't know about it. Yeah, I was wondering, man, what – what uh, it, do you think somebody's just – just doing that to try to break news or something i mean or does it make no i know he has a release night lefty but yeah, i don't no, know it's why under, but yes, i don't what know I'm why and nobody knows <laughs> thank why. you matthew if anyone, if anyone says they know why they don't uh, know why i just right. want to say you know, really we're kind of new here we're kind of new here and I, I heard like when the super dough comes out and, it, and that comes out i just i because you know, obviously i'm like a rookie with running it with the supers but i just want to thank uh matthew wells for that and uh, again, guys, the link is in the top. It's pinned um, and in the description for donating. Thank you so much, Matthew. Yeah. Sorry, you know, on, if you go to the, the, the federal inmate lookup, you'll see the Anthony Center has a release date. Right. Um, you'll see that Testa doesn't have it. It says, right. you know, life in prison. Um, so Center has the same sentence as him, right? Uh, there's one murder difference. I believe Joey has nine and Center has eight murders. Okay. Uh, but you guys got to understand something else. Like, First of all, like once again, there's nothing out there that says why he would get released unless you're related to him, unless you have some info or you have someone that you know that's talking to him, you know, or unless, like I said, he's really sick or whatever the fuck it is and we don't know about it. So right. there's nothing out there telling telling us why he might be getting released. Um, like I said, he's got eight murders. Um, yeah, it just blows my mind, man. Honestly, you know, even if he didn't just... have that many murders, I mean, they could still keep him in prison. They can, how many fucking, years they can keep done? you in prison on hearsay if you guys don't even know that. I mean, really? that's why Henry Borelli's still in prison. And so how much, how how much has he done so far? How much? How many years has he done so far? Oh, well, He's been in prison for 33, almost 35 years. The same oh, amount of time that he was walking yeah. on the streets. Wow. How about they put Borelli, though, inside like a minimum security at first? Like they didn't even realize it. They're like, get him the fuck out of here. Like, so they, Henry you know, Borelli is in prison for car crimes. He's not in prison for murders. Um, but the problem, you know, with Henry is that, like I said, um, the feds, you know, they can keep you locked up on hearsay. That's basically why Henry's in prison. That's why his appeals keep getting thrown out. You know, Henry Borelli gets, um, I believe 10 counts of um, the the car, the the um, overseas cars, car crimes, basically, transporting the stolen vehicles, right? He gets, I believe, 15 counts, 10 years a count. That's 150 years, right? Now, he originally gets charged with murders of Khalid Dowd and Ronald Falcaro. That gets reversed a year or two later because this is truly bizarre stuff. So he deprived them of their civil rights, right? Now, when you in the, in the United States, they had the law where you're depriving a U.S. citizen of their civil rights. Now, the way that they wrote that law, it has, says U.S. citizen, right? Now, Khalid Dowd was not a U.S. citizen, and they couldn't prove for some reason that Ronald Falcaro in court was a U.S. citizen. Is this all making sense? So yeah. they reversed the murder on Henry Borelli and Ronald Eustiga, who got um, originally convicted of that murder. So essentially, Henry got off on that murder charge, and he got 150 years for the stolen cars. Okay. Now, if you look at his appeals, if you look at the federal, how to get, how to put him in a timeout, timeout, fist. Though you're not blocked, fist, but a little timeout. Go ahead, <laughs> go in the fucking corner. God. <laughs> if you look at the, if you look at his appeals to get out, um, and they're citing other cases for why they're doing this to him in court. Uh, Judge Duffy basically identified him as a contract killer. The feds had him and had him suspected in numerous homicides. Uh, informants, of course, said he was involved in numerous homicides. So they have him pegged as a contract killer. And according to the feds, they can use that hearsay as a reason to keep him locked up. Not because he was ever charged with a murder. They're saying, no, we're not going to give you compassionate release. You're gonna. You're not gonna get compassionate release because you don't qualify for it, uh, because you're a contract killer. So you're gonna do the full 150 on stolen cars, transporting stolen cars. Wow, that's, that's crazy, though, that, too. That, because that usually crazy. when you're in court, though, they always say like objection on or hearsay. Like you can't even use hearsay in court. But the feds no. is just a whole nother deal. Like I mean, I'll huh? send you everything. I mean, they're citing numerous reasons why they're not gonna let them out. And they're basically looking at him as a contract killer, regardless of whether he's been charged with murder. He's a contract wow. killer. Look what That's the feds said he did. I mean, if you guys ever want to look at that stuff, I'll send you whatever you want. But 
numerous murders they had him for. Uh, Judge Duffy basically said, you are what would be considered a contract killer. You know, that's he's still there. You know, without I don't think being convicted of any murder, 100%. Wow. They can keep him there on hearsay because they know in their hearts, whatever it may be, that he's a contract killer. Okay, and they cite, I mean, I'll send you all the, the federal documents. I mean, they're citing numerous other cases where these things were used as a reason for why they're doing this. And keep um, it a minute. It's almost like why Capone got the fucking like the, the longest sentence for tax evasion. It's the only thing they were able to get him on. Yeah. Right, and, uh, right. But, but that is a sentence, so that can be that long. And Catherine Gregg just recently had the biggest sentence, like she had to serve it for um, harboring a fugitive with Whitey. Um, that's how they, they make their but there's a certain timeline. But what was what so what was his conviction originally? How many years, Henry? Yeah, well, he got life in prison for the for the double uh Khalid down and Ronald Falcaro, which was a murder associated with denying someone their civil rights. And then he got, I believe, uh, 15 counts of the transporting stolen automobiles, 10 years per count. That's 150 years. So you get rid of the the life sentence for the murder. Okay, you still have 150 years to go. Right. And they keep denying him compassionate release, despite him being from what his lawyers say. He has bad glaucoma. He's got heart disease. He's got diabetes, whatever it may be. But they're saying, no, this guy's a contract killer. We don't care if he's been charged with murder. He's a fucking contract killer. Associated know, with the notorious Roy DeMeo crew. No, yeah, no, I hear you. That's so, really I mean, the motivation that, behind it. No, and I know 100% that, you know, you saw you have the papers work. And I, I'm just, I just can't believe, though, that they could just do that without the conviction at all. It's like, you know what I'm saying? No, because they always, I always hear the core objection on or hearsay, object hearsay. So, but the feds, I guess, just a different animal. Yeah, and at That's the end of the day, they could all fall back on, well, he got 10 years for 15 counts of the shipping the car, so <laughs> it's still 150 years, right? Right. right I right. agree, Roro. Right. They're the biggest mafia out there. Yeah. Without a doubt. That's why, like, when, I, when, we talk about, when we talk about glorification, I always be like, well, with the underground shit that the senators, the kind of the line like in The Godfather, senators don't have people kill Michael. Okay, now who's being naive? Right. So it's just like, in a way, I have a little bit of respect for the old timers, like Russell Buffalino right there underneath Mike and guys like that who um, they just said, fuck that, man. We're going to do our own fucking thing. And in the beginning, though, it wasn't like with sickos and shit like that. Some crazy guys, but it was like gambling stuff that's legal today. Right. You know? yeah. but, I believe that's what my grip on them yeah. did. It was just prohibition, you know? Yeah. I Best agree with that happened. statement. The government is the biggest mafia, but I don't agree with guys like Michael Francis constantly hiding behind that slogan. It's like, stop it already. Stop, stop trying the to baloney, Mike. Stop the fucking baloney, bro. Mike, no right. cussing. No yeah, cussing. Stop hiding behind that. Every five minutes, the government is the biggest mafia. Shut up. Man, well, he's dead guy, man. He knows, no, That's what's trending, though, and he could write a book and make money on it. Yeah. And he did. Mafia democracy, right? Oh man! Yeah, mafia democracy. He's on Fox News. He's talking to Dinesh D'Souza every week. Whatever he does, you know, it's it's fine. But it's like, you know, he did it. He did a sit down with Sammy recently, and he he plainly says, "Actually, you should probably clip this for your show. It'll be hilarious." You just play it every once in a while. Uh, the mafia never extorted innocent people. We never heard it. Just never happened. He literally says that in the interview with Sammy. And I'm like, stop the baloney. Like, seriously. Stop the baloney. <laughs> so, That's a short right there, man. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Stop the baloney. You know? So, jeez. You know, I like that statement. The government's the biggest mafia. But I'm just tired of some of these guys hiding behind that. Like, stop right. saying that. We know that. Yeah. We yeah, know but that. Someone know it's, but someone that was involved with that life. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you can, I guess you know they have more reason to say it than anyone else. Sure. So, no, we're U.S. citizens. We know the the government has a what they would call a monopoly on violence. We know that. That's a, a legitimate known thing. You know, any governments all over the world, whatever fucking territories they they own, they have a monopoly on everything that goes on, making them the biggest entity to ever fucking exist. Now more than ever, of course, big government is as big as it's ever been. But, you know, when guys like Mike say shit like that and they're constantly, like, trying to... I just don't like those guys, like, trying to, like, paint the mob like it's glamorous or whatever. I don't know. Because I don't think it... Hey, I got a question for you. He's like, go on. Do you think Michael made his bones or do you think he got in there because of his father? Like, made his bones, like, gave someone the... Killed somebody? somebody? He yeah. might have had something to do with a murder. I think he probably set someone up and like. Had that yeah, going. I think I think there's a story of him. Um, 
Yeah, definitely. Either being in Volvo one somehow, but actually being there and witnessing it pulling a trigger, probably not. I don't think so. Nah. Witness he was a gangster. Um, I'm not saying he's not a gangster. Just so you guys no, know. I think though that he definitely did a murder was involved though with the murder, especially look at his childhood and look who was look who his father was. He was definitely around and um yeah. I would probably say, yeah, they had to make sure he was capable because even when Sonny probably proposed him, they were like, well, Sonny, is he going to be capable? You know, no matter what, the, the rules are the rules. Even Sonny, if they're like, you listen, it, Sonny was like, if you got to take him out, take him out. Yeah. His own fucking son. Sonny, Sonny actually yeah. abided by that code. It doesn't matter. And then the thing he went to prison for wasn't even what he even yeah. did, but they got him in for the bank robbery. And he's fucking, yeah. he's like, I'm going to live longer every day. It's a fuck you to the government. That's what John Gotti yeah. said too. And he ended up fucking surviving and getting out, which is incredible. Hey, can you pull up uh, It's Getting Real Fake's last comment right there? Yeah. Let me so tell you real fast. Money wasn't There's real. killers that are gangsters and gangsters that are killers and ones that don't do the other. So that's the thing, too. But yeah, go yeah, ahead. But I'm sorry. To get in there, though, I think that you got to do a hit. Go ahead. For sure for that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's getting real fake. So protection money wasn't real. It's 100% real, but what is the reason why that guy needs protection money? Is it because some guy sent his goons in there to smash the guy's place up intentionally, and then that guy came in there like an angel uh, trying to protect him from this fake situation he set up on his own? Oh, those guys are bothering you? Oh, I can protect you from those guys. Give me a little envelope. Meanwhile, the guy is the one that sent those guys in there to bust up his store to begin with. Right. So it's it's forced Nasty. compliance, Nasty. you know? It's, you know, this whole thing is very fascistic. And anyone that thinks that it's not a mic, you guys say like the government is the biggest evil, but what is the mob? That's a microcosm of a government. Thank you, and King. if it's any type of government, it's fascism because there's complete control. There's a dictator. You die for going against the rules. You'll literally end up fucking dead. There's a set of code. There's a set of rules. Um, you hear North Korea, you have like call out culture. If your family members uh, talking bad about Kim Jong Un, you're supposed to rat your family member out. What are you supposed to do in the mob if somebody's doing a transgression against the boss? You're supposed to rat him out. It's pure fascism. I mean, so yeah. to say it's any better or worse, I mean, I don't know. No, uh, then fascism, though. I mean, just taking fascism, it's communist, but you can call it a lot of fucking things. I mean, well, that's all, true. Yeah. Um, but no, I hear you, man. There's a lot of uh, contradictory type stuff too that goes on though with there. You know what I mean? Like it's okay to ride on the street though, but like I said, I guess you could do that for the boss, but as long as you don't talk to law enforcement, and that's another thing too. You have to kind of talk to law enforcement. <laughs> I mean, to stay on the street, especially in like those days, you know, whether it's in the pocket or whatever. But they're like, you're not right, supposed to talk to them. Right. But if right. the mob yeah, was a know. government, is it a good one or is it a brutal one? Is it a brutal dictatorship or is it a fucking right. democracy or whatever? Are we a brutal dictatorship? Well, that's what like, I'm saying. Like, I'm not even saying we're a democracy, but is yeah. it a brutal dictatorship or is it a fucking democracy? What right. is it? Or is it no, somewhere no, in the middle? There's no know. democracy. I don't think what? so. I don't think there's a democracy in it. The, the boss no. is the boss and that's it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, that's. And you're that's supposed to rat your friend out. They say, don't be a rat. Well, if your fucking guy is planning something against a boss or talking about a boss, you're supposed to tell about that. Right. The right. Same Good thing night. You do in any Thank you. Same thing Ireland. Any dictatorship. Yeah. Without a doubt. Boom. Thanks, G78. My man. Hope you guys all subscribe, like it, and uh, like and subscribe. So, uh, Good night, G78. My man in Ireland. Let's talk about now, though, the twins, though. What are the twins' names? Anthony Gemini Center and, Joey Te and Joseph Tester. Yeah. Now, how did they become with, with, like, with Roy? I'm sure in the car business but these guys were vicious though right from what everything uh, that is said yeah um not only did they murder well there's also patrick tester who's another important uh person in that crew who's joey tester's brother but not only do they On murder top right with, guys yep sorry yeah um not only do they murder with this crew they go to prison for one goes to prison for eight one goes to prison for nine murders they're suspected in dozens more um but not only do they murder roy but there's evidence to suggest that they were involved in at least eight more murders post roy when they were working with gas pipe casa where they got made mm. and that's just in a span of like six years Wow. So, I mean, I think that says a lot when you have guys that probably committed, we could say at least 
on the low end, 15 to 20 with Roy, and then maybe eight more with Anthony Gaspipe Casso. So, I mean, what kind of guys are you talking about? I mean, did you hear what uh, Convict? Uh, real quick, Ro, thank you so much for the Cash App uh, donation. Thank you so much, Ro. You rock. And I'm going to have you done with, with the rent stuff. I'll figure that out. I'm an idiot. Go ahead, Mike. Excuse me. <laughs> no, I was going to say, did you hear what Convict Inc.'s uh, thoughts were on Joey Testa? I yeah. watched the video we did a long time ago, and he said he was like a prison kiss ass or something, or like a yeah. He kind of he yeah. he's kind of going through a good uh, change with all his stuff, and he's got some different perspective on things. He he did another one the other day where he was kind of like, "Hey, man, you know, I, I'm clearing my mind better, and I have more better things to say about the situation." On our show, he was kind of saying that he almost he believed that. Testa had like uh Stockholm syndrome. Okay. And and was kind of like identified as a staff almost, you know, like was real, you know, like close to staff. And and it could have been a just like a a slick move to be like, you know, where you have it easy. Cause the, you know, staff trust, you staff did, you know, nobody's shaking you down, nobody, you know what I'm saying? And he uh, was kind of saying like he would like run to the staff, like, hey, how was your day today? Right. Yeah. And can I do exactly. anything for you yeah. type. Yeah. Maybe yeah. tell. I don't know if he was saying like telling the staff this guy's yeah. doing that, but he's trying to get out though, too. So right. You gotta understand, like, say, you know, they don't go into prison and act exactly the same as they were on the street, though. Too, I mean, you, you know? never know the mentality of someone like Joseph Testa, who maybe he identifies more with the corrections officers than the prisons. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's a different world. You're not, there's no, you don't have the same guns, the same crew, the same everything. Although he was at Butner, he's in a medical facility. He's not in, you know, like some really bad spot where, and which is probably why he is being cool and wants to stay there. Cause that was another thing that Rob said was once a guy gets to a place like that, they don't want to go back. They don't want to go back to a, you know, somewhere like Canaan or somewhere where it's tough, you know, and you're, you're having to really watch your back and there's real prison politics. I think so. he was in terminal Island at one point. I think he was right. real quick, guys, you two just keep going. I'll be right back. Yeah, I got to pee for sure. Yeah. No, yeah, but you know, you don't know, like he might identify with that type of person, like growing up, growing up in Canarsie, these guys grew up next to firemen, next to cops. I right. mean, I believe his brother was a police officer. Is that right? Believe that. So he, that might that might be his mentality. Of course, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Rosso knows better. Um, but yeah, I mean, he he, you know, he spoke of the stuff that he got into it with him. Also, you know, like they had disagreements, and then uh, so you know, there was the he had good and bad. But then the other day, he had he he's doing real good right now, as far as like you know perspective and everything right now. And so he he was on there talking about it, and he said he did say the one thing he said was Joey Testa actually was taking advantage of the actual rehab type programs that they had. That he wasn't okay. BSing it. He you know he didn't have to do crap, but he did involve himself in the actual what was available type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As far as like maybe drugs, maybe this, maybe going to these meetings, maybe going to anger management, whatever. You know, yeah. along with, you know, identifying himself as kind of like part of staff almost, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, a lot anyway. of those guys do that. I mean, like, I was looking at everything that Jimmy Coonan's been doing in prison, you know? I mean, I got like a bunch of certificates and all these things that he was involved in, like um, de escalation stuff or, you know, right. attitude stuff, like, even so much that he was like teaching classes. That's like he, he would get certified right. in those courses and he would. He's actually teaching some, I don't know if it was like anger management or something in that realm, right? So a lot of right. these guys, yeah, they get into that stuff. Um, whether it's genuine or not, I mean, I guess as long as they behave themselves. And, yeah, it know. probably makes it easy on the staff. And then, uh, yeah. you know, but like my my uh, childhood friend, man, Scott, um, he, uh, he did 27 years, man, on a 50-year sentence for murder. And right. It was uh, wow. kind of a drug deal gone bad type thing, man. And the dude started fighting with his buddy over a gun, grabbed a hold of the gun, and he shot the guy. So that was the situation. And so he got 50 years uh, because the guy that was with him, that he saved his life, testified against him. Otherwise, they wouldn't have even known who they were. Wow. Or anything. Yeah. So anyway, uh I started writing him once because I had lost contact with him. I started writing him and I told him, I said, man, start, you know, you still have a chance, man, to do something in your life or whatever, you know, even if you don't get out for the 
do you know start trying to do something man he started getting into you know programs and stuff they had because listen man there's still dope in prison you know what i'm saying so you could still get a hold of everything you can get on the street in prison <clears throat> excuse me so he started going to aa going to this doing this yeah. joining get, got into a, a, a christian group leaving gang politics line man within a certain amount of years of him doing this stuff they after 10 years of being denied parole he was granted parole after wow. 27 years man just from the time that he started to that because how old was he when he went in i'm sorry if you said he it went before. in in at about 19 20 okay okay 19 or wow. 20 man wow yes man didn't get out till you know he was late 40s right you yeah. know what i'm saying and so it's a whole different world you know he was shell shocked man you know yeah when he left there was no walmart there was nothing like that so seeing that stuff just blew his mind you know what i mean so yeah dude, but you you think about a guy like that you know coming out but but see it's different now man they got computers in prison now they've got you know i mean it's not that they're not that so they get know. them a little ready when they get out like they're kind of used to some of the right some of the right. technology yeah exactly yeah please be respectful all opinions are welcome however if you are rude you will be removed from the chat in her mom's voice so fish Get in the fucking corner and fucking think about what you did tonight. I want you to. You know why? You know why people. You know why? You know why? <laughs> put them in the bathroom. Put them in the bathroom. Put them in the bathroom. You know why some people come on here and call people that cover organized crime fanboys. They call well, them fanboys because they have a high opinion of the people that somebody like me or you are talking about. Because you won't yeah. have somebody do that on somebody that's talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. Or Joel Rifkin, you won't have somebody saying you're a Jeffrey Dahmer fanboy. They'll just watch it for serial killer content. It's fucking but American history. When you have a high opinion of, of you know guys that are a lot of them are low lives, you start thinking people are fanboys. But you know, to me, like a lot of these guys are no different than serial killers. You know, they're just they're just working for a greater cause together instead of like some lone wolf shit. You know, they're still committing depraved acts at the end of the day. Right. Thank yeah, you, Mr. Nice reason, Guy. For some reason, that's how it happens. I mean, I don't get it, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nice Guy. Appreciate that, man. No, hey, it's, 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 it's not buying that post. Listen, no, your channel's not drama. Like, we're trying to get away from that. Oh, yeah, it's, no, it's, no. It's it just that some people out there have a high opinion of criminals. I don't know why. Right. It right. isn't just a screen. Until someone comes up to me face to face and says something, no, it is what it is. This is a fucking screen, and, and people are gonna be whatever. Yeah. Maybe they were whatever back in the day. I don't give a fuck. This is what we do, and I like to do. Well, it. I don't and, care either. And, I mean, it doesn't and matter. That's it. I'm not a fanboy at all. I hate that. Listen, I even say that I was making fun of the fanboys at all. It's fucking American history. Simple right, that. right, man. We're talking so, about. Uh, I don't even. We shouldn't even need to explain stuff, this. But, I mean, I mean you, the, yeah. the amount of where's the amount their of... content? Where's their channel? Where's their right, face? Right, right, right. Come on, give me right. a break. Forget about it. Yeah, you know they say All the right. government's the biggest mafia, but I bet they celebrate July Fourth. The I guess you're a fucking oh. USA fanboy. I mean, you're you know, USA fanboy. There you go. Well, I can go on forever. Stay, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's what I. That's what I, my point was earlier about stuff. People. Think whatever their cause is or whatever is the right one, and that's it. And it's, it's like, all about their ego, Mike. Yep, yep. Stop the baloney, man. Let me Jeez. just tell you this: I'm starting to grow as like a human because I got this device and it works. And people won't do this. If you have the courage, if you get mad at something and you have the courage to look into yourself and see why am I getting so mad at that and look into that, it'll fucking change your fucking life. I'm oh, I ignore you. it on my channel. I never engage with these people, but the biggest thing that bothers me is people that behind avatars attack content creators that are actually dedicating their time to, to do something. And most of us have like, I'm not saying real jobs, but like a nine to five, because for some people, YouTube is a real job. So I don't want to disparage yeah. anybody that does it for a living, sure. but like, you know, quote unquote, no, real jobs. A, living, buddy. a, lo a lot of people have like real jobs like me. They have to work a nine to five and they do this, yeah. you know, to, to just, you know, fill up some time, be creative and, and you know, talk to sure. people about things. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So no, it doesn't it, come from a bad place, but people want to make it a bad place. But that's OK. Right. No, man. But you have you have Thank a you. serious it's really fake. Thank hell you of so a much. content channel, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like for me, I really respect it, man, what you do and like the effort and the, the actual quality that you put out, man, is, is amazing. So, you know. 
no I appreciate it. But respect, you know, man. I mean, you I know, respect you know. anybody that comes on here. You guys, you're on here showing your faces doing shows. I mean, right. I respect yeah, that. That's, that's why I enjoy it. it you yeah. Know? yeah. And we it also a lot, do on dude. Location. It takes a lot. We do on location. We don't just sit behind a computer screen, too. Like, you know, yeah. you see, if you watch our old material, you'll see me in Springfield, me in South Boston, me. Like, we actually go places. Dirty, dighty. Yo, USA fanboy here. What's up, Dirty yeah. Dighty? Guys, subscribe. Please like this. Hey, that's okay, man. If you want to, there's nothing it's wrong with tonight. that. It's lit tonight. El Latredo 38. I never that's seen right. him there or her. Thank you so much. It is lit happening? tonight. It's lit. But subscribe up, man. I'm telling you guys, we also, though, this, we don't just do this. We release good content as well on the road, doing our fucking thing, and tell your friends about us, and uh, we cover all the rackets. So, yeah, all right. I forgot what we were even talking about. I mean, I don't even know. I know. Oh, I know. No, I, went to, I went to the bathroom though, real quick though, though. But it's all right. No, we it's were on Rob. Hey, let me tell you real fast, Loomis. What you literally just said, man, about looking into yourself and uh, you know figuring out what's making you mad. Rob just said that like two days ago, man. I'm not even lying. Uh, that, yeah. That's helping him to get through different and realize why am I so mad at these people or why am I doing this? And I'll give you another one. Every night before I go to bed. I count how many positives did I have for the day, whether it's like mom and dad are still alive. I got this job done. I just, you know, I, I got my, all my Jaws. work done. There's always about 22, 23, 30 positives, right? We're going to let one negative fucking beat 30 fucking whatever fucking positives. Right. No, it's weird how our minds are almost programmed to be like, no, nah, don't go run hills, man. You did a good man. Don't do it today. Where does that though come from? It makes me think like almost there's an afterlife and this is all a fucking test for something else. Cause why is, cause everyone has that in their mind almost like, don't do that. But then you got to rise up. And then yeah. by the time we figure out life, we die anyway. So it's, you know, so I don't know, man. I know I'm, I'm probably getting like, you know, don't bring uh, me down, man. <laughs> no, I'm no, just, I'm just saying you. though, you know, look into yourselves, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I come from the addiction background and I'm just saying though, that it just really helps whatever makes you mad or count your positives. I'm not trying to get off the subject, but for real, no, I care about people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. grateful. I'm still here. You know what I mean? It's not right, smell right. the fucking roses. Yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> So which part do you want to get into, man, with, with Roy now? which, well, which Loomis, my, let's, let's just read this. I was just here not too long ago with the Unique, and I have a video of it I have to post. Loomis in Brooklyn, where Galante was killed. My grandmother lived on Troutman Street. That I don't hear apartment overlooked the yard where Carmine wow. was killed. Cops and news took those aerial photos from her apartment. Damn. So, when I, so when I went to, um, oh, my God. Don't That's tell me. wild. Brooklyn, Brooklyn um, when I went to. With unique, what was the fucking part of Brooklyn? Is that? That was Bushwick. Bushwick, thank you, Bushwick. And then we went over to Knickerbocker Avenue, and I saw Troutman and stuff. But I'm actually, we'll probably post that short tonight or tomorrow, though. I was there not too long ago at the address of Galante, and then Unique showed me the house on the side, like where they were taking the pictures up on top Damn. and stuff like that. Though, shout out to Unique. Uh, yeah, that's sure. it. Yeah, yeah. That was that. What a trip that was. I came back with missing windows and everything, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was a fucking Damn. trip. Oh, yeah, the, it was wild, man. Wild trip, though. But then he put on the pads, man. We were back. It was he's a great guy. He wrote a book called Memoirs of a Ghetto Bastard. It's fantastic. The Black Mafia, the real Black Mafia, and uh, check it out, guys. William Unique Battle, it's fucking man. Bushwick is right. My dad yelled at here for letting them in. Well, I must have missed that comment. It's yelled at her. Me. I bet it was yelled at her for letting them in. Okay. Letting okay, the cops so, in to take the, the picture. Oh, he also That's showed me wild. different places, though, that Roy had. He's like, this was Roy DeMeo's. I I still have the lock and talk, though, with them, though. That Just stay Damn. tuned. It's going to be fucking lit, I guess is the word. Lit. lit if you're in Philly, nice. say John. That's my John. I go, listen, when I live in Philly, I'm like, you'll never fucking get me to say John. And I don't think I did. <laughs> I don't know. We're getting off topic. Anyway, Roy. All right. So <laughs> I heard that Roy was freaking out though towards the end, though, because what was the ultimate thing that was killing Roy? Was it the fact that the indictments were coming down and they thought he was gonna uh, cooperate? And why would they think he's going to cooperate if he never did before? Like, then don't they give guys chances to be a stand-up or no? Well, it wasn't I don't know if it was that they thought he was gonna cooperate. I think actually some of the detectives thought that Roy was gonna cooperate. Some of the NYPD detectives actually believed that he was um corruptible. And this is based on a couple of them, like uh Kenny McCabe, who had 
numerous actual conversations with Roy. Yeah. Because this is all reported by Kenny McCabe. Um, wow. And once again, a lot of this stuff I can't talk about because it's going to be released by somebody else. Sure. But I know for a fact that Roy had numerous conversations with Detective Kenny McCabe. Um, he had run-ins with Coffee. Um, even Pete really? LaFresha had a run-in with Coffee. Oh, man, he was a bad cop. I mean, like a bad motherfucker. Yeah. He Other was back guys had run-ins with him. Case. A lot of people back. had run-ins with him. I mean, with Coffee? Some people, yeah. Um, some people believe he put that cigar in Galante's mouth. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's that's, that's that's what he said. He's like that. He's the one that he put the. I could maybe though because man, he got blown unless he was just didn't killed immediately like that because your whole Pushed body rick and mortis and he bites down on it. But uh, that's fucking nuts, man. Be imagine being a cop man in New York City though at that time though, man. Just it, 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 with everything like there wasn't just the Italians, yep. but you had the Russians, you had Colombians there, you had everywhere that pushed with crime. You know it's, the black mafia, all that. Oh, it's not it's crime in general. You know. Yeah. Yeah, this is why though we started the channel, and it's no not fanboy shit. This is why I started a, a channel back in the day. Psychopathology is fascinating. Yeah. I always say I always want to get to. The, I even asked Anthony a lot of the psychology of murdering someone, the psychology right. of whatever. I'm interested in it, and if nobody likes it, then go fuck your mother and get the fuck out <laughs> of the fucking thing. That's and all. Stop the baloney. Stop, stop the, the baloney. effing baloney. Stop the fucking baloney. We're sick of the baloney. All right. All right, Michael. <laughs> now let's go. Uh oh, he's back. <laughs> Who's back? Cops were worse than gay. Oh, he's gonna be good though. Let him be All good. Right. All right. Cops That's were good, worse yeah. than gangsters. I mean, some were. What about Mike Dowd? You guys ever see the seven five? Yep, Mike Dowd. Yeah, he was over in um what was this precinct? The seven five, right? The yeah. seven five though. And my, he was supposed to be on my show. He's a great guy. He did it like he did a thing. I'm Mike. I don't know if you've seen. He's like Loomis. It's he's coming over. I love his tenacity. And then a fucking car tire fucking blew up, and he was on a schedule, so I couldn't do the interview. He was waiting for me at NYC. I remember but you I, telling me that. Yeah. That documentary though, man, the seven five, just the way it was done. It's it's top three, maybe the best doc, or maybe the best documentary I've ever fucking seen. It is fantastic. Wow. Mike Dowd, D O W D. Yeah. He was on that blood letters and newspaper, whatever. What's it called, Mike? I have a so I'm terrible at names, but they sit in a stool and they talk. They Soft white I'm underbelly. Drunk. Soft yeah. white. Yeah. 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 What did you call it, man? What did I call it? <laughs> blood letters. That's that blood letters and bad man. That was that other. Oh, one. yeah. No, that was a good show. Okay. That's a good show. Jeez. Jesus Christ. Stop the baloney. Um, <laughs> Yes, Mike Dowd documentary was fast. Is he cool that Mike Dowd? You talked to him? I hit him up on Facebook years ago and he was yeah, like, Yeah, dude, because you know he has like a handler. Cigars. He was like, Yeah, not a handler, like a, an FBI handler, but he has like <laughs> a, he has an agent and shit like that. So he could have easily though been like, Oh, or pay this and blah blah blah. No, I was on the phone with him direct and uh, uh he was, cool. to me he was great. You know, so shout out to Mike Dowd, the seven five. He was on Joe Rogan too, and yeah, a bunch he was. of stuff though. But man, he's, dude, been, this guy was just he's a, been on a couple of other shows lately. I've seen him on like, a couple of other there's things. There's gangsters. Yeah. And there's gangsters like Colombian ones getting interviewed. One guy who was a boss going, Mike was a gangster, like just with a badge, though. You know what I mean? But like, right. yeah. 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 Man, there's a bunch of dudes. There's a, a lot of them. I mean, I'm not saying all of them, but there's a lot of them like that. Hey, whenever I can interject. Shamas thought it to Tava did three April dot. Thank you so much, man. I'm sorry I got that wrong. Shams Dola Tabadi. Thanks, bro. Thank if you. I got it thank wrong, you. I'm sorry. You know, yeah, appreciate thank you. it yeah, for Subscribe sure. Up, buddy. Thanks, Shams. I've got an off-topic right. question for Crime Spot when, uh, whenever yep. we got an opening. Can right I now. jump in? Okay. Right how about this? This NYC man. How did you ever do anything on Jam Master J? No, I haven't. No. Okay. Okay. I think they didn't they arrest the person for that like a year ago. Two years they ago? did, man. Somebody got arrested and everything. I just didn't know if. Uh, yeah if, yeah in jamaica know. i used to work in jamaica actually yeah no okay. i remember when it happened of course i mean okay but i don't um how could i say well i don't even remember why 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 it happened like i don't know did, did you remember what it was for really or it's just kind of shady but, right some people said yeah. it was dope dope deal type stuff different people had different things uh i know that sammy's ex-son-in-law was good friends with him. Uh, really? David Seabrook was cool with Jam Master J, man. Is that right? And, uh, yeah. A lot of pictures killed. together. Was he killed in the studio? I think so. 
Yeah, I think so. That was a long unsolved. Yeah, he was killed in the studio. Yeah, yeah, it was a long time ago, right? Right, right, right. Oh, really? And then he always seemed like a quiet dude. You never heard of yeah, him like getting into stuff. Run or the EMC, man. That's the right. shit that I, my shit, man. Oh man. Yeah, you never know. A lot of those guys were involved in. Sure. Oh, one hundred percent. And that's even well today, especially too, like kids that are just trying to come up from the gangs, like the new rap groups, like Boozy and all that. People are like, he, I don't know. I saw a video the other day. It's like Boozy's a serial killer or some <laughs> shit like that. But you know, <laughs> that's just fucking. Um, you see him is, on Mike Tyson's deal, man. <laughs> What's that? Mike he Tyson was on Mike Tyson's. Yeah, he fucking, uh, yeah, he set him Lucy went on there, right? Said, well, his son, <laughs> right, transgender, right. set him fucking straight. Sure did. And, yeah. Uh, Boosie's like, oh fuck, you know, <laughs> with, with Tyson, with Tyson right, right, with people. him there. How about uh, <laughs> how about Dapper like, Dan's man? Dapper Dan. You know anything about that? Back no, in the Dapper day? Dan. <laughs> Sorry. Dapper Dan's in uh in in NYC man or or somewhere in New York man. I, Dapper Dan's. What is that about? They. Man, Dapper Dan's was a spot where everybody went to get like bootleg Louis Vuitton jumpsuits and Gucci jumpsuits. Like all the big rappers, everybody was getting, even Tyson and stuff was going. Bootleg there. stuff? Yeah, because it wasn't real. Nobody was making that stuff then. So they were getting fabric and custom doing jumpsuits for people, man. Interesting. Where yeah. was this happening? In, in it, it was in New York somewhere, man. I don't want to say the wrong thing, man. You know, no, I don't know. I don't even. You could say anything. I wouldn't even know. No, I'm I saying I don't want to say the wrong area because I really don't know, bro. I'm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't be completely lame. I just know that uh, that that was a big deal there. I didn't know if you'd ever. I it, it trips me out that they were even able to do it for so long, because yeah. uh, you know what I mean? They're using the logos and every like if you look at like '80s rappers and stuff everything they were wearing all that stuff was that wasn't real because they didn't have it it didn't exist man like that's crazy louis jumpsuits wow. like that or gucci or whatever it was oh all, yeah here this dude saying, was yeah. making this stuff you know right and so uh yeah anyway man that's pretty cool yeah i mean a lot of weird stuff was going on i mean i know a little bit about jamaica you know it's not far from where i grew up i used to work in jamaica queens um mm -hmm. I knew people who grew up in Southside, um, Baisley Projects. Actually, you know who I used to see around Jamaica when I worked in there? There's this guy that was around um, the Supreme team, uh, Kenneth McGriff. Okay, I Supreme. Believe, I believe he works for Def Jam. His, I think his nephew is Waka Flocka. Um, okay. His name is Bimmy. Wow. Have you ever heard of Bimmy? Yeah, yeah. Right. So I used to see him every once in a while. I think like two or three times I saw him on Jamaica Ave. Twice okay. it was like the same thing in Dunkin' Donuts. So not that that means anything, but I'm just saying that was like an example of a guy I used to actually see in Jamaica um, who I could tell he had a lot of money. I guess he was like a big exec with F Jam or something. Um, so a lot of those guys were still around. Like I said, you know, you don't jam Master J. It's, it's crazy. You think he's like the DJ for run dmc you don't think he's still like walking around hanging out in jamaica queens and doing he probably i don't know if he had to be doing that i don't know what was going on i don't know maybe right. he was involved with drug deals but a lot of these guys they still hang around the same neighborhood you know you never know what's going to happen right what you're going to get into i mean and that's why a lot of dudes that do make it they the ones that are smart enough man they get out and and stay away you know what i'm no. saying because it's just you can get caught up too easy man you know what i'm saying yeah. It's better Way to stay away. Longer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah lefty no. says, uh, Bimmy is an informant. Is that right? I see. I didn't know that. I have no idea. I would see him at Dunkin' Donuts driving a big fucking, probably like a big Escalade or something. Wow. Truth is, I didn't know who he was when I used to see him, but I knew he was like important or something. He had like that vibe to him. Big Escalade, fucking tatted hand and just looked a certain way. And then I found out later who he was. I didn't know who the fuck Tyson did was. fight Mitch Blood. Yeah, he did fight Mitch Blood Green in front of Dapper Dan's. Remember Mitch Green? That's it. Right there. There yeah, you go. Yeah, I just sent yeah, you Mitch, some pictures, Loomis, of 1980s dudes. Went, if it's a pain in the ass, don't mess with it, man. Don't mess with it. I'm just showing you. Yeah, because then when I put it on you here. You have to turn it on. Don't mess with I'd it. Have, yeah. I'd have to leave the laptop. Yeah. See, there was a lot of pics of, of uh, Tyson going there, man. He would go there. and uh, asked, Every hey, big time. Jam all right. That that I think that's LL man with oh, Dapper LL. Dan. Sorry, yeah, you're right. That's LL with Dapper Dan. He still yeah, got a got legit it. clothing uh company now, and that's uh I think that's Eric B and or no Rock M with somebody. Dapper anyway, Dan's dude, boutique. Way off topic. Sorry, y'all. Well, wow, he's 79 years old. Holy shit! Isn't that something, man? 
Yeah. Dapper Dan, American fashion designer and haberdasher. Um, Original bootlegger, man. So he's from up. Harlem. Wow. Yeah, you see, I don't know a, too much. I don't know a whole lot about some. Yeah, of I just didn't know, man. The if you heard it. stuff, I mean, right, right, right. From, I mean, some of it from local to me, I know, but yeah, yeah. Um, with the comments, I must have missed something, but you know, we don't get rid of people though. But no one talk about people's mother in the comments and anything personal like that, or we're gonna have to put you in the fucking corner, back in the in the put bathroom. Put in the bathroom, man. Put yeah, don't talk bed. about anybody's mom. Jeez. No. Unless their uh, mom is like Eileen Wernos or something, you know. Stacks, what's up, Stacks? There he yeah. is. What's up? I gotta Stacks? talk to you, Stacks, um, tomorrow. Give me a call. Uh, good seeing. Oh no, wait. He must have wrote something up here. Wait. Let me. Oh yeah. Loomis OG NYC Christmas. Thanks, what's going buddy. On, Stacks. How are you? What's up, Stacks? If anyone don't know about Stacks, go over there. Give him a subscribe. Chatting with Check Stacks. He's out there. Yeah, he's hustling all the time as well. Yeah. And doing his thing. Boston and us love Boston. So I got the Boston Scally right here. This one's actually called the Southie. I love these hats. 50 bucks. They're fucking comfortable as fuck, man. You know, it's Irish though, but I have the Italian pin on it though from 1970, the Buffalo. Buffalo, no. I got you know, but it is what it is. Um, I'm just in a good mood. Whatever. Let's rock and roll. Mike Tyson. Cause I'm, I'm pumped for that Tyson show too. And Mitch yeah. Green and shit like that. That's going to be great. I wonder whatever happened to Jerry Cooney. Yeah. That I don't know, the, man. Anyone? I don't know. The, I don't, uh, that I don't know. Uh, man. Uh, poor Cooney, uh, man. Jeez. Uh, Sorry, Carlos. We don't know. Who, all right, cool. Oh, poor the fellow. Is, I gotta. Yeah. No, I know, I know who he is. It's just, yeah, I know geez. the name. Yeah, I know who it is. Uh, yeah, man. Guys, make sure though. NYC Crime Spot though. You subscribe to him. If anyone's not subscribed yet, you're gonna love it on location stuff. The drama free, and um, unless he comes over here and <laughs> <laughs> he walked into the drama bomb. Uh, I'm just <laughs> breaking your balls, Brett. No, 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 it's fine. I don't care. No, that's cool. That's uh, cool. That's cool. But what I'm saying though is, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's cool. the but honestly, it, like all that me screaming before, like, like I said before, and like I tell everybody in private conversations, like. I've done a lot of stories, like the biggest story on my channel. Some of them have nothing to do with the mob. Yeah, and I'm slowly going to not cover the stuff because it, it just it it brings in like the, the lowest frequency, lowest denominator. And I'm not saying anybody here, but, you know, out of 100 people that come into chat rooms, it's like there's like 30 of them that are just like the lowest fucking form of of and then like the mob tube shit in the mafia genre is full with these people. Yeah, it's just not a good place to be sometimes. And, and I am and moving away from it, and I've done some other stories outside, and I'm definitely gonna, like I said, move away from it. And my really? channel is gonna suffer a little bit. Um, Why? man, do it, but if you unless you just don't like doing it, but well, I've been saying it to myself for a while it, though, that man. it's gotcha. it's 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 just a weird, it's a weird place to be. I mean, I'm I still gotcha. gonna cover it, but it's gotta be more more of the non-mob stuff. Gotcha. Because there's a lot of interesting stories that haven't been told, you know. Oh yeah, you could do so much in NYC, so much. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. That's I, mean, I have a cool, fucking man. list of stories. I have yeah. a list of fucking crimes that if you if you type them in on YouTube, you wouldn't find anything, and that's what you got to do. You, know? awesome, you got to look for man. what's not there. That's so how awesome. many bodies though do you think though the crew had the DeMeo crew? I think probably uh, seventy five to eighty five. Wow, that's uh, yeah. I think they probably hit a hundred all of them. Because they're doing they the hires. Yeah, they're with the, all of them though together. And they used to, I forget, uh, Dominic with Taylor told a story though. And it, it, it came back to be true though. Like, I think it was a little 18, 18 year old guy or whatever was driving around the block and he saw Roy pop him in the car and stuff like that. Like, they would kill a lot. And he said that he'd go in there and you'd know if they didn't kill for a while because they'd kind of be like this. But whenever they killed someone, like, they were like, so they got a, not aroused sexually, but they were like, yeah, whatever. So that's almost like some serial killer type traits, huh? Yeah, I mean they killed women, teenagers. Um, there is a um, there is what I believe evidence to suggest that they killed a woman who who was an informant, possibly for the NYPD. Wow. Um, this is actually something that I discovered. Uh, that was actually told to a detective who who was kind of flabbergasted by it. Um, very interesting. I don't know how they missed it. You told me to hold on a second, Loomis. No, no, no. I was telling the comment to hold on because I realized when you're talking, I shouldn't have another because someone just pops in. And I'm just working on myself on the show. Go. No, ahead. it's fine. No, it stems. I'll tell you how it happened. Actually, 
if you guys want to know kind of how it happened, how you yeah. how you run into fucking odd things yeah. when you research things. You know, I was doing a story on Vito Arena, who was uh, a guy who joined up with the DeMeo I crew agree. in the late 70s. Now, he gets arrested in uh, 1982. They finally catch up to him. He starts cooperating. And um, one of the things that he that's, was reported at the time was that he had information about a murder of a woman by the name of Constance Burke. And it, I saw that 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 was being reported and i was like huh i wonder what that's about right so so you know i went back into the news archives and i said let me see if i could find anything about a constance burke missing or whatever and i found a report that was mixed in with a, another couple of people missing where a mother was looking for her daughter named constance burke constance. um and she disappeared after midnight now here's where the newspaper fucked up she disappeared so if you guys don't know the gemini lounge sits on flatlands avenue in troy so okay. the newspaper says that she was last seen at the genesis lounge at flatlands in troy obviously that's a typo they meant to say gemini lounge that's on flatlands in troy okay. now coupled with that with Vito Arena later mentioning her name, and then her body gets found in Canarsie Pier, dead, cut up, or whatever. Okay? This completely goes under police radar. This is not mentioned by detectives. This is not mentioned in the FBI files. This is actually something that I found just from random fucking research. Wow. And, um, you know, there was also reports at the time that she might have been an informant, and... They had reached out to this woman's brother who was living in Baltimore at the time. And he was like, oh, I never heard my sister being an informant at all. But coupled with, you know, everything I told you with Vito Arena mentioning her name, her going missing from the Gemini Lounge, her being found in Canarsie Pier. It looks to me that that this is a woman that they murdered sometime in, I believe, in 81 or something like that. Um, now listen, this is all circumstantial evidence, but if you if you put everything together, I mean, what, you know, it makes what sense, is, right? You know, it makes sense, and uh, you know, it's been shown to a detective. Other people have seen it, and wow. they came to the same conclusions. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. How how about Vito, man? What all? He's he was an interesting dude, man. Wasn't he like pissed off in court because he he felt like he was better than somebody and stuff like that? Wasn't that his kind of his thing? Well, he. Well, his he he was um a gay guy, obviously. So that's kind of weird. He was a homosexual, but he was another guy, you know, born in I believe 1945. By the 1960s, I mean, this guy was already getting in trouble for numerous things. I mean, I think he had like 11 or 12 arrests um, before he even teamed up with the DeMeo crew. Um, counterfeiting, possession of uh, firearms, stealing cars, all types of shit. So these guys were all like degenerates right they all kind of flock to each other um he was involved with a number of murders for the for the crew i don't know if you guys know he becomes a witness that's um, what i'm saying once he becomes yeah. a witness didn't so didn't, what happens with Vito is that he disappears from the crew at like 81 82 and him and his gay him and his boyfriend they start knocking off um dentist office and real estate agents there's actually articles you could find you know, uh, that doesn't mention their name because they don't know who they are of two men uh, rob a real estate agency on Long Island. They go into not an agency, but an open house. They would go into open houses and they would basically do like this father and son thing like, oh, some weird kind of, oh, we're interested in the house. We're a father and son or whatever it may be. And they would stick up everybody there, the real estate agents, anybody else that was looking at the house. You go to an open house to buy a house. All of a sudden there's a gun in your face. Right. So this is what Vito was doing. He was they were also robbing dentist's office because back then, you know, they would keep cash in these cash. places, not like today. Um, they get caught in 1982, both of them, and Vito starts singing like crazy. Um, and he's basically telling them about all the all those murders. And like I said, he mentions that Constance Burke thing about the woman that gets killed and he is actually where that whole pizza story comes from, where they eat pizza and cut bodies up. That actually comes from Vito Arena. Wow. Um, so that, he told the cops that? Yeah, he told them that. Uh, you remember that I mentioned before the murder of Khalid down in Ronald Falcaro, that uh -huh. they got the civil rights charge for that? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, he said that, you know, he was there for that murder. And after they killed them, Roy sent Henry and him out to buy pizza and hot dogs. And when they came back with the pizza, the bodies were being dismembered and caught up and put in tarps. So that whole story of the pizza actually comes from one story from Beto Arena. Gotcha. If gotcha. they always did that, I have no idea. Who the hell knows? But Bam BIP says, What's up, NYC? XOXO. Sorry, I'm late. Yeah. So that's where the hey Bambi. How Thanks are for you? being here, Bambi. So that's where everything that's where everything comes from. Uh, right. But yeah, like he would he would he would um talk about a number of murders with them, of course, and he would cooperate. And like you said, uh OG Mike, he would make his way to Houston. Right. Where you're at, right? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Yeah. So he when he got to Houston, he before he got into the situation he got into, he he was wanted in at least 20 armed robberies. Wow. As a matter of fact, they had a they had a they had a sketch of him that was going around of this fat guy that was wanted for at least 20 armed robberies. I actually have it. I'll, I'll show you. It's pretty funny. So ultimately, he robs the wrong place. I mean, you're from Texas. Yeah, here. I mean, <laughs> Listen you know to this one. Uh, do you know what happened with him? Uh, no, 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 I'm listening. Tell it, man. Yeah. Well, he goes into the place. Um, now, there's reports that he was almost leaving, but then he goes back to grab something. Uh, then the guy blasts him. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't read the article in a while, but I don't know what kind of gun he had, but. He gets shot numerous times, and he ultimately he dies in the hospital after robbing. I believe it was like a CD store or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, isn't wow. that something, man? I could, yeah. yeah, I was tripping out, man, when I started looking. I was like, damn, I kind of remembered it, you know, from back then, you know, hearing yeah. about it and everything, and, and I was like, wow, that's a trip, man. You know, oh, so yeah, so you were around that. I mean, yeah, so you were in Houston at that time. At the time, right, right. Wow, yeah, and it, and it was kind of a, you know. It was news, you know what I'm saying? It was it, it, it wasn't like it is now where people are getting killed every day. It's just, right. it's just a normal yeah. thing, man. Yeah. So if you look, if you look here, this is actually the sketch that that was going around. You see it? Wow. So that's Vito, obviously, on that side. But that sketch oh, yeah. was, was yeah, yeah, yeah. that sketch was going around Texas. They were looking for that guy who was wanted in 20 robberies. And to expand on Vito even more, he was really eccentric. He was a weird dude when he was, when he was a witness and they were protecting him. I mean, he was very high maintenance. He was requesting, um, he wouldn't talk. Sometimes he would stop uh, the trial. Oh, I need a break, and then maybe I'll start talking during testimony. That's what I'm saying. He was doing yeah. stuff like that. Okay. He was doing all. He was asking for plastic surgery because he said right. he, he wasn't good looking, and all these other guys look, look like baby faces. So he was trying to get them to pay for plastic surgery. Yes. He was requesting Bruce Springsteen uh, on vinyl, but they had to be in like mono or something. He actually got his boyfriend, Joey Lee, that he convinced authorities to have him stay with him while they were locked up. I mean, this is a guy who um, he would tell the press that Tom Selleck should play him when they make the movie about his life. I mean, <laughs> this fucking wild. guy had an ego. Oh, no, this dude was wild, man. That's that's the stuff I was talking about. Crime yes, spot. he that was very, he was stuff. very strange, and it's unfortunate. I mean, I say it's unfortunate for a guy like Vito because he gets killed in '91. Murder Machine comes out in '92. I mean, this guy was literally, when you think about it, kind of about to be the star he always wanted to be. Right, right. But unfortunately, he couldn't stop. Because this Robin. book would have came out, he would have been free. He loves the attention. This guy would have been on sure. Geraldo. He would have been oh. all over the place. Without a without doubt. a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, for Crazy. sure, man. That's wild, man. Yeah. Did they yeah. know he was gay back then, though? Because wasn't that back in those days? That was a problem. Everything that crew did was a problem. I mean, they knew he was gay. <laughs> they knew okay, he they was, no, broke all the rules. <laughs> they were yeah, they knew he was gay. Rules. Yeah, I think so. I think it was kind of a known fact, which really uh, tripped it out. Yeah. You know, is that any relation of Vic or no? No, no, I've never heard anything like that. Oh, Vic O'Reina. O R E. It's O, yeah. It's not yeah Arena. So. Oh, that's he's, right. Very good point. And Vito was supported to be adopted, by the way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Vito would be on YouTube with the Muppets. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he would have been all over <laughs> TV. If he would have just stopped robbing shit and stayed <laughs> oh, on stayed out for that another old year. Queen. <laughs> Oh shit, that's funny. Who? Are, what are those guys' names? The OG's a mob guys? too, right there. That he did. You know, you'd be with. You know who they are. We don't say their names. <laughs> Look at them. 
Oh <laughs> That's God, funny man! How the more hey. you talk about us, the more we're. What, what, he, he does them right here. <laughs> like fucking put the phone away from your ugly mug. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> you know I can't. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Oh, oh man! man. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Right. Who's that, who, who's that um, supposed to be? Who's that supposed to be? They got a show, think? man. Um, oh, um, oh, archaeologist okay, okay. and and Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, hello, people. I know you're talking about. <laughs> hello, people. No, it's like that's not. <laughs> Gene like, Simmons. Wait, you ever see a short, show, Mike? You ever see a short? Like this? no, man. Oh, oh my god, god. Oh, man. Lee has done a lot of funny shit. No, I mean, stop! Don't say their name. Stop it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Wikipedia, no, no. whoever you call it. Like, he's done a lot of funny shit. And I think that if for some reason he wasn't breathing tomorrow, he would leave an interesting legacy behind. And that's all I'll say about him. All right. Because he's been around doing that's funny positive, things. Man. That's all yeah. right. That's okay. That's good, man. I How can't about- doubt what he's been doing for because I think we, we kind of started YouTube around the same time with the mob shit. Like a few of us kind of started our channels at the same time. So right. has he become a bit of a pariah? I would say yes. But at the same time, he's definitely leaving some kind of. Uh, yeah, funny little legacy. Right. <laughs> He's a fucking fuck innocent. him, <laughs> fuck him, I mean, and the other I'm one. Just saying, I don't know. Get the fuck out of here with that. The bullshit. genre might be more interesting. I don't want to hear that. Guy like he, that. They, they suck, man. They suck, and that's that. I can't disagree, but it, you know, I just <laughs> it's just funny that they're around. They gotta exist. How could they not exist? <sighs> oh, I understand. You're saying they're like cartoon characters. The boy they leave a legacy behind. Well, yeah, go fuck off. No, sorry, I got to be real here. No, no, we can I don't like that's fine. That's fine. I don't care. You know, I've just seen I've just seen so many different I like James. So James is nice. Two years. But I, James Proctologist, I mean, is nice, but fuck that man. They're leaving the legacy. Well, then you know what I mean? Like you're 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 putting people down constantly. You never did anything um substantial in your life. So what gives you the right to fucking put down anyone? What did you do in your life? Oh, not a legacy. I'm not talking hey, just to be clear, I'm not talking about a legacy like in in all of everything, I'm just talking about this little tiny. No, I think no. Mike though through. I think Mike threw out the word legacy, and I say, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that, did I, man? I no think leg- legacy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm sorry, I just had to be honest. That's okay, sorry. man. Hey, dude, have you ever done anything on uh, Vinny Ocean, man? No, I haven't. No, okay. I mean I know he's New Jersey, but exactly, still, yeah. Okay, but I haven't. Right. No, I haven't. I ran into him here in Houston. That's why I'm asking. Did you really? Yeah, he lives here. What was that like? What a world, man! We were. Bo- it was during COVID, man. We're both going to. D- I, I had my uh, gallbladder taken out. He's in there for some pre-op stuff, and we both got masks on, right? Because they make you wear them to go get uh, your blood work or whatever. It's like a, you had to get a COVID test before you got surgery. And so we're both in there. Dude's got a mask on, just yelling on speakerphone, man. Yeah, man, I got to get this COVID test, you know, just thick, heavy uh, Jersey accent. I got a COVID test, you know, and he's going. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy, man? And and they uh, call his name, uh, Vincent Cabela. And I kind of looked at him as he went by, and I just put it in my phone. Vincent Cabela, Vinny Ocean, son of a – and and an article had came out like a couple years before, man, where he was taking over strip clubs here. So he had been outed already. They knew he was here. He was he was taking over Tony Soprano, club. right? They they were yeah, saying like he was, yeah. that's who the wait, Sopranos wait, wait, was that a fake name he was using? Vince Vinny Vincent Cabela was the the name the the feds gave him, right? That's the name they gave him. Yeah, they gave him Cabela. Okay, but once he got outed, everybody knew who he was. They knew where okay. he lived. He lived in a nice man. He had a mansion, four million dollar mansion. Oh yeah, uh, that's uh, why they yeah the strip well, clubs and everything. They're almost like the real Sopranos. There's a documentary on it. It's crazy. The, right. I'm the talking about the family. Right. I'm talking about even right now. He, he he's got like a couple restaurants here. That's crazy. All, and, and so the, he took he muscled in on this one lady's strip club. She owned this in in a nice area. You know what I'm saying? And so he muscles in on it. She doesn't know who he is or whatever. And so she takes him to court, right? And that's where it all started. You know, like becoming on the news. Former mobster up to his same old stuff or whatever, you know, and and there's art been tons of articles and stuff on it. But yeah, man, a dude was a trip. Man. I was like, I couldn't believe it once, you know, I Google and look. I'm like, damn, that's it. And he literally looked exactly like the picture of what same shirt. He must have wow. all black short sleeve shirts. I mean, it looked at same slacks. He's got like one uniform he's wearing all the time, man. That's so, so funny, man. Anyway, yeah, it was a trip. Man. <laughs> well, that's cool, though. That's interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, th- that that whole thing, like from Jersey, and then I, yeah, Mike. So then he went to Houston after or Texas, right? Yeah, yeah he's that's in, crazy. In the medical center, man, you know, sitting there, uh, you know, and in good shape man for like he's 70 something years old or something yeah they let you keep your money isn't that isn't that nice dudes i'm ball i'm telling you man he's ball i got a dude that can look stuff up like that you know or whatever guy had like seven high-end cars in his name you know and like (laughs) all these restaurants and clubs and this how he sold his house man for like i don't know four or five million you know i guess he finally was like I got to get out of here. Everybody knows who I am or whatever. Huge. Like, I mean, for four or five million, I know that doesn't sound like a lot for like a huge mansion, maybe, but it, it was, yeah, that's a good one. No, that's, it that's, was a monster house. That's a great so, it was like, that's serious. I mean, five million don't sound much. I mean, I'm just saying, right, you know, some Mike, people, right? think, he didn't own the Tupac masters, Twice. man. So what the hell? I don't know. <laughs> I just break him off. Like, you know, Stop so. the Stop the fucking baloney. Um, and um, all that. <laughs> anyway, the Corleone version too. That's funny. Oh, we got the cool, we got the Christopher, we got the uh, you know, we got the fuck around Holy and shit. find we got the fuck oh, around man. and find out if you come up and pull up on us. You got the spider, <laughs> the spider. Uh, guys, Jeez. uh get uh get rap bastards if you're not a fan of cooperators, you're gonna love though this book. John Red Shea, New York Times bestseller, South Boston Irish Mobster who took the rap when everyone else ran a memoir. Rap bastards, and that's on Amazon. And you, Mark Wahlberg wrote the forward. You guys will absolutely love it. The story of Whitey Bulger as well with Johnny Red Shea. And um, then we got a Paul stop the baloney, and we got Michael cussing. I got to pull that one up though. Oh come on, man! Do you really? <laughs> yeah, have that was it? a funny video, man. I was dying. <laughs> I had to the stories. People are probably like, "What the fuck is this?" I don't care. I was dying. <laughs> I was laughing so hard because you're fucking laughing and crying. Um. All right, what do we got? In Texas, let's uplift the in Texas. Yeah, but up in the northeast, that house would be mid teens. Yeah, I don't know. Left I'm, I'm, no. I'm guessing I live it's, in the northeast. I'm guessing you're saying it'd be like house. instead of instead well, of it could, five million, it may have been worth you know fifteen no, million. I could get a six. I live in the northeast, and the six. I could get a, for six million dollars. I could fucking get. Like fucking half a city almost here. <laughs> no, I'm just being honest. For six mil, where well, I'm you can at get it. a huge house. I mean, even New York. I mean, that's a huge house. I mean, that's pretty. I mean, it's All not. Right, a, I'll put it. It's not now, New York. Hamptons, though, that's where like the Hamptons and places like that. Right. That's no, where I mean, it's that's low money. Okay, that's so I'm gonna put it in perspective. World. That house was like down the street from where Vander Holyfield's mansion was. <laughs> Oh, that, nice. That's yeah, what I'm saying by size wise. This was a serious house. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I thought you were saying like it was. It was just a four or five million dollars. No, 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 no. I just because some people field. think like that ain't a big deal, like for rich, rich people. No, yeah, it's it's a big big house. House. it was yeah, this well, little cool. house. <laughs> pretty big house. <laughs> Fucking Holyfield's his neighbor. His neighbor. Oh, who's your neighbor? Evander Holyfield. We're slumming it. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Tough life. <laughs> exactly. Tough. Exactly. Unbelievable! What a world! What a world! Hey, I got another one, man. How about how about uh, one bite? Everybody knows the rules, man. You're out there, man. What's oh, up, Dave Portnoy? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I've never met him. I mean, I don't know, but yeah, I like I like what he does. I don't mind what he does. Right. He, I, I I when I first started watching him, I was kind of on the fence. My wife didn't like him because he was dogging some people. Okay. Man, I've why I've been binge watching those, man. I mean, they're good. Some of the people yeah. he's had on, man. My, my pause watches, he loves them, man. Yeah. Yeah, you get addicted oh. to those. I mean, I watch basically every one. I mean, they're only like four or five minutes, you know, usually. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we, me and my daughter spent an hour in line to watch, to ride the damn uh, train at uh, Universal Studios, you know, the whole time we just watched reviews, yeah. <laughs> watched those reviews, cracking up, man, headphones. And that time went by like that. But anyway, man, the people he's had on, man, he had the Vander Holyfield yeah. in Atlanta. At his oh, favorite you've been doing spot? this for years, yeah. What'd you Hell just yeah. find him, Mike? And he, just, dude, I'm lo- uh, man. I just came out of a cave, man. Yeah, <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, okay. the dude, I get it, man. I just started watching. No, go movie. ahead. I'm not dying. You know, I'll be the best. <laughs> I'm old, man. So the dude, hey, man, he he's crazy though, man. He's sitting there asking Evander, "Are you still missing that part of your ear, man? Yeah. Or how do you?" Do you notice that? I mean, I'm just tripping, man. I'm like, you got a Vander there, and you're breaking. No, he's funny. Yeah, I mean, he says he's funny, but like, he got into that fight with that guy recently. That was pretty funny. Got into a fight with a Boston pizza owner recently. 
Well, yeah. the dude did told him to get like out. The, get oh, that's what I was gonna say. Like I said, he I like the shirt was guy. like three times too small. <laughs> yeah, that dude. That was that, that was guy was, was a nuts too. Shirt. Though. That guy was crazy. That was yeah, he was though. But at the same though time though, um, I understand a way. Is like, like I don't know, man. Like, well, Dave, you know what he did though, and I will give him credit for this. There's a bowling alley down the road for me named Chaco's, and when the when the um COVID happened, he yep. did a huge thing for small businesses, yeah, and like Chaco got a few, yeah, and he gave Chaco's down the road a few yep. thousand and stuff like that. that so he cool. helped small. They businesses. don't think about that shit. I mean, a lot of people don't think about that. I mean, there was that was really cool. A bunch of businesses that he right. saved during COVID. He, he helped a lot of people. Saving anyone. Yeah, no, he helped a lot of people, man, for real. Yeah. I mean, I get, okay, he went to one of my spots, man, when he came to Houston, he gave him like a three or four acted, you know, kind of chunked the box and was, and I was like, man, for one, he, I don't even know what he ordered because he was acting like he was going to get a, they got two styles of pizza there and they're both great. I've been having these pizzas since 85, man, consistent, okay? I am I love pizza, man. And so, you know, I was kind of bummed, man, that he gave him a crappy score like that. And it, like, That's the based part, on though, his, though, is that Could that ruin, like, business in a way? Like, you know, no, I don't think it hurt them because the local people were going, but it didn't yeah. help them either. I mean, you yeah, may have brought in. You know, you know, so, no, no, I'm, not, the, I'm just saying we're on that in the Northeast, though. Maybe it's different, but there are spots in the Northeast, absolutely. Yeah, uh, he's on East Coast time mostly. So, you know, over here it's like you got – Places in New York and Jersey and Philly, uh, New Haven, you know, places like right. that. It's he like, loves New Haven, yeah. If he's on that scale, it's like, I mean, I love the New Haven spots too. I mean, they're really great. Oh, but I want to try them all, man. You can't like, oh, you know, around here. I hear you saying how it can be. You know, you know what I'm like saying? It, it was kind of you know? disparaging. You know, it was like, for me, man, if it's that bad, dude, I mean, you're in some other town, I would just wouldn't even do it, man, I guess. Uh, for me, that's just me, no, man. I, Everybody that's me. That's why I said I'm only going to the places that I know that are good. I don't want to put down like any, any type of uh, – yeah. He's yeah, a funny dude, though. He reminds yeah. me of Tom Green a lot, man. Tom Green. That's he funny, reminds man. me of Tom Green a lot. Yeah, man, he almost looks he like him a little bit. He, he does a little. He's, he's funny, man. I'm he's still shocked, though, man. Yeah, Mike, I don't have known about this guy for fucking years. I'm still shocked. My wife's <laughs> like, somebody's going to beat his ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know who reminds me of Tom Green, uh, Loomis? That guy you once met in New Jersey? Which one? The, guy the, the one that does, makes content also? New Jersey. I don't want to say his name. You might have did like a cash for uh, gifts for kids thing with him or some shit once. Oh, that because yeah, yeah, the Godfather. That guy reminds me. Of, he reminds me of Tom Green. <laughs> yeah, Especially with the know, way Tom Alex Green Jones. looks now. Alex Jones, I always say, but Tom Green, Alex no, not Jones, same. Really, Alex Jones, fade, yeah, Tom. man. He, he has no. He's not like really featured, but if you took out like. They got like the same thing going on, man. Yeah, <laughs> Alex, Jones. Alex Jones. He's a fucking funny guy. <laughs> Jeez, man. Well, yeah, I know, but Alex Jones is great, and uh, yeah, the pizza guy's great, and everything. And uh, so, listen, <laughs> Mike, I can't believe that like you just found that. I just um, found this guy, y'all, man. His name is Dave. Oh, <laughs> and he, he, he's got this one bite pizza thing, man. Oh, yeah, I, you guys gotta watch it, man. Yeah, he's great. a half a billionaire who owns uh, <laughs> yeah, Barstool, who owns Barstool Sports, exactly. Yeah. I'm so lame, dude. I, He's man, I'm like walking around here. Everybody dollars. one bite. Everybody knows the rules. Go ahead. I'm sorry, man. Crying I like the guy that he fought with in Boston. He took his slogan seriously. He's like, I don't like how you judge people on one bite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's just right. a slogan. He takes more than one bite you know? every time. Every time. Yeah. My new thing's gonna be uh, as many bites as I want. Everybody knows I don't follow the rules. That's my new slogan. There, on you, it, go. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, I did see you do some of those reviews. Yeah, I did oh see man, those. I love love. Pizza. Yeah, no, yeah, Mike. Wait, you see Serpico's? I'm gonna hit and and wait. So there's a play. He gave fucking Angelo's. I think it was like an eight eight and one other one like a nine two around here, which is uh. But um, oh yeah, at I heard the same time place, though, yeah. we were talking on the show like, who is he though to be like the master of pizzas or whatever? But he's from the East Coast, and I you know I moved around, lived in Florida, and people are like, this we try this. I used to like laugh at it. That's why you always see. Yeah. I'm still seeing Papa John commercials or fucking Domino's commercials because that's what people get a lot of times, and that blows yeah. my mind. But we have pizza yeah. that people don't even know about. That's fantastic. Nah, Northeast spread the word around man. here in Pittston and Scranton and Wilkesbury and that's uh, I'm going to start showing some of those motherfucking spots oh. because people don't even know that's I've all I've been um I've been doing kind of food reviews too on my channel. Oh cool. Yeah, yeah. they're fun, man. Absolutely. I it go is, to is start oh Freddy's. Yeah, that's a place that's where I grew up in Queens and a place Oh yeah, no, New York, York has fantastic pizza, man. Me and Unique in Bushwick as well. I uh, went to a spot I forget the name but New York obviously has great pizza. I'm just saying so do we. No, yeah, I believe it, hundred percent. Yeah, 
What's your favorite spot, crime spot? For pizza? Pizza, yeah. You got to pick one. I got to pick one? Pick one. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows the rules. No, oh, shit. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, name a, name a few. All right, so Freddy's. She named Freddy. So that's so. You know what's funny about when you live in New York? And I, I've said this before. Like I don't have a fam a favorite pizza spot. I have a spot that makes like a favorite type of pizza. Like I go to Freddy's for a Sicilian. I'm not gonna go there for the triangle for the round. I'll go somewhere else for that. You know, I guess I'm kind of spoiled in that sense. But <clears throat> Freddy's. Um, there's a place called Amore Pizza in Flushing that I that I really like. Mm. Freddy's is in Whitestone. Um, Let's see what else you got. Fuck, man. Oh, you got Umberto's. Uh, you guys ever have a grandma slice before? How's that? You, you ever heard of a grandma slice? It's like an upside yeah. down, thin Sicilian cheese on no. the bottom, sauce on top. Okay. Really? The grandma slice. Yeah. It was invented out in Long Island uh, at a place called Umberto's. So Umberto's is great. I mean, I like Umberto's. Um, Any relation to the clam house and all that or just a totally? No, different? not that I know of. Okay. No. Okay. Um, Damn, I never even then, heard of that style though. That's yeah, they got a grandpa. They got a grandma. Oh, Lucia Pizza. Tony Handsome said, "Hey, what's up, Tony Handsome? How are you?" Lucia Tony Pizza, Handsome, not bad. thanks for being here, guys. Like Down and subscribe. Flushing. Thank you so much. Yeah, Amore is one of my favorites. Tony Handsome. Um, but like the ones that Dave goes to, like like Johns of Bleecker is great. I've had Johns of Bleecker. Um, there's another one in Queens called. Um, Donnie's house of Danny Danny's house of pizza. That's another good place. There's a famous one they always talk about in Howard Beach, uh, New Park Pizza. Okay. It's also got a kind of a lore to it because there was like a weird racial incident that happened in Howard Beach years ago. Is back. that where that happened over there? Yeah. I've heard, I heard um, of that before. Okay. I think it's overrated. I'm just bringing it up just to say it's overrated because everyone I got has, you. everyone's in love with it. But um, okay. I think Danny's house of pizza is good. There's a lot of good ones, man. Uh, but the New Haven is awesome, bro. I've been there like probably two or three times to have that stuff. What? Hey, man, let me ask you this: What is a tomato pie, man? What is that? What makes a pie a tomato pie? Oh, but yeah. you see the fucking Serpico's one. Oh, forget. A tomato, tomato pie, pie, from when I've had it, is just uh, what they would do is they put like the tomato sauce, and there would be no cheese. The only cheese that they would put on it is like grated, you know, Parmesan. A little bit of parm. Like, yeah, a little parm uh, or pecorino, I guess, depending on where you go. And okay. uh, maybe a little olive oil, and then they put it in the uh, you know, the the oven, okay. coal fired oven would be the best, uh, or the wood fire. So, is the crust basically like a Chicago with tomato, or is it just a or it can be any pizza with just sauce and some light? A tomato pie, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I think of tomato pie, like I think of New Haven, like if you if you if you look up, like, um, let's say Sally's Pizza in New Haven. Yeah. Okay. You'll just see a big red pie. It doesn't look gotcha. like there's any cheese on it. Okay. I guess it could be um in, in a square style or a, or a round style, I suppose. Okay, I got but, you. Uh, to me, yeah, because yeah, I've heard him style. say that, and it, you know, and it, I just here I don't have that man. I've never yeah. had it. I've seen them on there. What you ever seen that pizza show, man? It may be on. I don't know, man. It's a dude with a beard with some tattoos. He he he's big into pizza. He goes to a lot of places. He's been to Sally's and all those joints. He's man, he's really good. Uh yeah, I think show. that's Frank. Uh he owns uh Best Pizza over here in, in Williamsburg in Brooklyn. I think that's I think that's who you're speaking of. Great yeah, yeah, he's show, cool man. too. Yeah. Damn, great show, man. Yeah, uh, pizza's one of those things where it's like, you know, and you know, it's funny now because in New York City, there's like so many pizza places that are opening up. Um and it's starting to become like there's so much good pizza around because so many people are getting into it and there's like a lot of new innovation behind it. Um, mm -hmm. That's so, awesome. So, you know, That's it's awesome. easy, you know, it's not hard to get a good slice of pizza. I mean, there's a lot of good pizzerias now. A lot of people yeah. are doing interesting things. Um, right, right. There's a lot, man. And, you know, there is, to be fair, there are people doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing <laughs> with pizza, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, there's I, some bizarre I, things, yeah. Yeah, I, I, so I can definitely get with that. Just for me, man, I'm. I just kind of feel like, I guess, man, I'm old and you know, like, feel bad for people or something when I see them dog somebody or something. You know what I'm saying? But you know, or, or for any food reviewer, you know what I'm saying? When they go and get, especially somebody with a big name, you know, it could that could really that could like say Guy Fieri shows up somewhere where and goes, man, this place sucks. <laughs> Can yeah. you imagine, dude? <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? He when he yeah. came to Houston and said these places are good, 
you couldn't even get in there, man. That's crazy. I mean, there's places I went to places that I, I, I would literally pass by there five times a week, man. Didn't even really know they were there. Small places, a little burger place that's it was in almost someone's garage. Dude, he went by there, man, tried it, said everything was good. You couldn't get in the place, man. Wow. It was nuts. And and that's awesome, man. You know, help help. It is people. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that that upsets the gatekeepers. I mean, we all kind of gatekeep our favorite restaurant. Right, favorite, right. You know, and then when someone finds out about it, it's like shit, I can't even go there anymore. Yeah, right, right. You know, right. so that in a sense for the public and the locals, it pisses people off. But of course, yeah, it's great for the business owner. Yeah. It's What's up, Mike? Fun. Right, right. But that's it's the power scary, of YouTube. Mike. You know, you could ruin a restaurant. Sure. Yeah, you're and see, that's what I'm saying, like, right? You know, yeah. You're just a guy, right? That started the channel. You could, like, and the, maybe it's one person in the world who's going to judge it. Like, who are you to just say that this isn't good? Maybe someone else it would sucks. like it, you know? So yeah, that's, that's why, like, if I was to show stuff, I would just... You know, go to the, show the ones like Mike, like we were talking the other day. Show the ones that are awesome. Like, you know, I, I hey, know I've been to places I just on. wasn't going to review. Yeah, I'm not going yeah. to shit on anyone. Yeah, I'm just, no. I just, I, I started try. doing it, and I went, you know what, man, I can't tell anybody to eat this. You know what I'm saying? I just can't. You know what I mean? In yeah. good faith, say, hey, everybody, go. People go there and go, man, you, this is horrible. I know everybody has different tastes. You know what I'm saying? Some people like this style or that style, but you know. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's fruit like, on pizza. I don't, I've never had it. You know what they're doing now, guys, which I really kind of like because I had it for the first time recently. Um, I don't know if you guys realize everybody's putting hot honey on everything they could fucking put it on lately. Is that you right? You heard of it? You saw no, that? Man. Hot honey? No, I haven't even. I like, know what hot a honey company is. called but... Mike's Hot Honey. Like, It's like hot. Like, not spicy, spicy, but it's got a little thing to it. Yeah. So, like, by me, they got a spot that, that'll that make, like, a round, crispy crispy pizza with, like, the pepperonis. You know, and the pepperonis turn into, like, little cups. Like, yeah, they, they, they like that. Uh, I yeah, so they'll they, put a shit ton pepperonis. of pepperonis on there. With, they'll turn into cups, and then they'll put the hot honey on it. And I got to be honest. It's pretty good. Is it good, man? See, oh, that's cool, good. man. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had a couple of interesting ones, man, that I wouldn't normally get that had, like, some different stuff on it, man, but... Pete says no. You'll try it, Pete. Yeah, you know, uh, like what? <laughs> what? What would be like the weirdest? Like to me, anchovies are weird. Like I would never eat that. Man, I, I, well, I like the works. I like everything, but pineapple and stuff. Like I like, you know, if I, I remember when I was drunk, we got it one time from Domino's. I ate it. It's not really one that I'm going to order. You know what I mean? Meat lovers, I love, and uh, whatever the fuck. Yeah, I, so I heard about that about you. What? Is that right? Well, you know, the no. What I miss? Hold on. What I miss? What? What'd you hear about me? Yeah, you said meat lovers. I was just fucking around. Oh, you fucking cocksucker. <laughs> That's cool. You. No, you know, uh, th there's, a, there's a meme, man. It's hilarious. Do you, you know, the, the, I think it's from Casino where they're holding Pesci right. down and, and, and forcing him to watch while they beat his. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Casino. Oh, yeah, with a pineapple uh, right, pizza. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You seen the one with the pineapple pizza? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The first Italian yeah, is that. forced to watch as they put pineapple on a pizza. You know, yeah. it's him all yeah, down yeah, on the yeah, ground. Yeah. yeah. People yeah, Tony know, Handsome's bro. comment, crave it. Uh, that's a place that does crazy pizza. They'll do like a taco pizza or right. uh, a Thanksgiving pizza with sweet potato and fucking oh, stuffing shit. and all types that's of shit on it. Jesus. They do like right. some wild shit over there. That's not too far from me. They're okay. I don't I don't mind them. I've never really had one of those bizarre I've, slices, but I've had a barbecue. Like stuff. Barbecue pizza is probably one of the weirder ones I've had. I had right, yeah. No, they make that right. a lot by me. Barbecue do they really, around. man? Yeah. This had like you know, it had like some briskets and it has barbecue sauce instead of tomato, and then it has cheese. I mean, you know, it tastes good, it's just not pizza to me. You know, I taste yeah. it feels like I'm eating a barbecue yeah. sandwich. So, you know what, what I mean? they'll do by me, and they do this in a lot of pizzerias, like legit, like Italian pizzerias, they'll do a white slice mm -hmm. with uh crispy chicken cutlet chunks that they'll toss in like a barbecue sauce, and they'll just put it on the pizza like that. Okay. That's what yeah. they'll do. So that's the sixteen dollars a fucking slice. Jeez, man, what that? size is that slice? Crave, Crave? sixteen dollars. I don't know if it's that much. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Damn, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even know what the one in Bushwick was because I went in with the camera and stuff, and they're like, "Here, just take it." And I know it wasn't because I had the camera and the show. They because it was you. I was with Unique. They're like, "No, you don't have to pay." Blah blah blah. But uh, ah, that's I don't know right? because. Uh, New York City slices are definitely going to be boom. Around here, though, you're paying only like two seventy five, and that's like with toppings on it or something like you know, not even three bucks. That's not, yeah, that's not outrageous, man. I mean, yeah, sixteen I mean, at this slice. Point, I don't know what a slice. It's probably like two seventy five. 
I, oh, man, I hardly buy a slice, man. That's I'm not bad. Pizza. Phil's Pizzeria on Main Street. Best specialty slices, toppings in Queens, hands down. Phil's Pizzeria. Tony Phil's Anson. Pizzeria on Main Street. Where the hell is that? You're in Queens, Phil's right? Phil's Pizzeria on Main Street. Two dollars, yeah. fish. Where is that on Main Street, Tony Hanson? Is that like Jewish Main Street? Or Chinese Main Street? Hmm. Main Street. There's, there's a lot of... <laughs> He said they got fantastic chicken rolls too. I'm Damn. fucking starving. I wonder. Yeah, you are making me hungry now, man. Hey, go get pizza and do a review, man. Phil's Pizza on Main Street. I don't know Same thing, Mike. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> By Booth Memorial. Oh, okay, I know where that is. How how do I not know that that place exists? Is it still there, Tony Hanson? Four dollars. That's grams. still Chinese Main Street, kind of. Yeah. Huh. Approaching Jewish Main Street. Damn, it's really divided, huh? Is everything oh. divided like that? Yeah, things yeah. change quick. Things change wow. quick. Ask Fish. He knows how things change quick in these neighborhoods. He's a professional. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. I'm being serious. Oh. I mean, if he grew up in Brooklyn, I mean, he knows neighborhoods change pretty quick. Right, I mean, right. It's like Bronx oh, Dale, man. <laughs> you know, from from you know from three. Every blocks, neighborhood I mean, does. It's not like mine around here. Is not the same. We used to keep the doors unlocked, and like it was very strong knit Irish around here. Now it's no. It's every neighborhood. I think is just. Different no. now, man. You but know, even just the either, change. You ever see kids outside language. playing ball? I don't even see kids outside playing baseball. We used to have the parade for little league, all that shit. It's like, what's the fuck? It's just depressing, and it's all yeah. because of the, obviously technology and the phone and stuff like that. And these people, could you imagine being born like that? And they're just like growing up. These kids in high school watching Andrew Tate, and like you know, with these big cars and all that. And that's like that's their mindset. I got to get this. I got to get yeah. that. It's just a different terminology. I can't Mike, stand like, that you, fucking guy. I can't. Stand yeah, that. Mike. When you said that in line and you're watching the phone i remember like when i used to go to the dentist and you'd have to grab a magazine like you know right. and wait around like these people yeah. don't even know that that existed no. and um no. i don't think that it's very healthy and i don't know i double see but it is what it is right you know yeah uh but i don't know that's just weird Italian ISIS. Yeah. Oh, what's his name? They don't grow up outside like fighting and playing chase and playing nah. sports or boxing like it's it's just a different i mean there's some kids but it's we fought part, every do. day, man, with our friends. Every day. That's what we Easy. did. I don't care what we were. If we were BMXing, friend. skateboarding, somebody says something, what? Ah, boom, man, we're throwing down. You know, we didn't know how to fight. We're little kids. But you know what? A couple seconds later, we're going to get a Coke or whatever, man. And that was it. That was just the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. That's how, like, we would have win or lose, though. It's like, that's how you, I actually, you'd meet yeah. a lot of your friends like that. Because there was a North End. I'm in East End. And there, there's South Wilkesbury and Heights. And uh, that's... Yeah, because yeah, these were my friends. friends. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, it's, uh, different now, man. Different world. Do they do block parties in Brooklyn anymore? They do them in Queens. I mean, so I'm sure they do them in Brooklyn. They're they're not as common as they used to be, but I know of a couple of blocks that are that have them at least once a year. So I'm, I'm sure they do them in Brooklyn. Block parties are yeah, cool. I, mean, I want to try. Michael Francisi has a place called Slices. Yeah, he does, but there's none in the Arizona. That's where he doesn't have an L. He probably it's Roman also. style. That's what he says. It's Roman style. Tell that's another really guy. Is. That's another guy. You mentioned Andrew Tate. That's another guy. He's got Andrew Tate's, uh, you know what, in his mouth. Oh, does does? Uh, oh yeah, Andrew I heard when Andrew went away though. Andrew Tate went away. I heard him say, uh, I'm "Obsessed yeah, with Andrew friend. Tate." Um, he's like, "I'm friends with him," and blah. I'm like, "What the fuck?" I was like, that, that must because because he's like one of the most famous on the internet. So you know, people. What, this is like what I learned too when I was trying to put this Bulger project together with certain oh, people. Uh, they just try to attach themselves to people to try to just like get like you know what I mean to cloud in popularity man. and all that shit. And when I see that, I cringe. I can't do that, and it's probably going to be a downfall for my life. But I just Me I too, cringe. Man. Like I can't be that way. I have to be real. Just like Mike. Remember when you're like legacy, and I was like, get the fuck going, stop that baloney. But I just <laughs> I, I don't remember <laughs> saying it, man. We're gonna. Have to have a play back. Gotta look back, but I'm just saying, no, a um, legacy within you know, yeah, this little thing, yeah. yeah, not like a legacy. I mean, no. not like a real <laughs> legacy. Yeah. No, I know, but I'm just saying, no, we're just having fun now, though. No, I mean, we're not talking about uh, you know, a famous, you know, <laughs> we're not talking about uh, Guy Fieri over here, yeah, right. <laughs> I heard Corona Ice King open location in Howard Beach. Anybody, oh, I didn't hear that. I don't know. The lemon, how far are you from Howard Corona? Beach? 20 minutes depending on traffic that's what john got right yeah what's corona ice king so the lemon ice king of corona is an ice uh like italian ice okay it's okay. a place that's no, been guys, i gotta 
many, I'm many, many really. decades. Um, it's across by a place called the Parkside Italian Restaurant, which was owned by uh, a Genovese guy who passed away recently, Tough Tony Federici. Okay. Across from a park uh, called Spaghetti Park over there. It, was, it used to be like a real Italian neighborhood. Got but, um, yeah, the Lemon Ice King of Corona, it's a famous uh, Italian ISIS place. Okay. I had an uncle named uh, Joe Corona. Last name. Joe Corona. Corona. His last yeah. name is Corona. That's Corona. Real name. Yeah, man. Wow. Dude, man, lived to 90 something years old, man. Died wow. in a car crash. Freaking oh, that's horrible. Crash. Isn't that horrible, man? Isn't that horrible, man? I mean, wow. you know, because he was still healthy besides that. You know, 90, like 98, man. Got hit. Wow. Car, in a car, car crash. accident. That's yep. unbelievable, dude. Yep. Sure did, man. Horrible. Was um, he driving? No, man. His daughter was driving. Made it even worse. She made it, you know. Yeah, very, very, very sad situation. But that dude, man, uh, never worked for anybody his whole life, man. Um, came, I think he came from. I, I'm sure he came from Palermo. They lived in Connecticut for a while and then moved down to Houston. And okay. um, yeah, man, self, just self-made uh, dude, you know. Sad, always, always uh, yeah, really I is. Know, Tony. Told you guys are killing me with the pizza talk. I left yeah, NYC yeah. for the West Coast. Can't get that shit here. I know. I got it. It's just getting me so freaking hungry. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure you could. The problem is, like, I don't know how deep, like, the slice culture is on that side of the country. Like, New York uh, City, like, it's slice, slice. I mean, of course, we buy pies all the time, but it's like, oh, I got to go get a slice. Like, I'm walking down the street. Let me go run to the pizzeria and get a slice. Walk down the street and eat a slice. Like, I don't know how often that happens. That's a around here, though, too, but not as much as, like, New York. Some places have slices. A lot of places actually have slices here, and then or yeah. you just order a pie. Um, but Oh, Tony uh, Hanson, you're in Vegas. I hear Vegas is, like, becoming one of the number one pizza cities. Unless I've been given fake news, I hear Vegas is, like, blowing up a pizza. Man, I think they got all kind of great food, man, right now, honestly. But no slice, huh? Fitness after 60 says pizza is junk food. I mean, if you have one slice of pizza, I mean, Listen, man. I, I'm bad? not going to argue with that, but I'm going to tell you. No, it is. Yeah, yeah, no, it I'm not going to argue with that. I agree. And I'm actually like doing a whole, like I'm doing like what Rocky did this winter, Mike, how I'm doing hills now, I'm doing it in the snow. I'm eating healthy and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, no, he's I'm going to be eating is. pizza. Not a cheat thing, though. <laughs> having Chicago pizza is a casserole, my fish. I, you listen, you don't eat pizza with a fork. So um, I'm gonna go get Chicago and show you how to eat it. Hey, (laughs) but but straight up, man. Do you? How about some hate on that? I'm sure. How about the uh, UFC fighter, the young dude, man, or jujitsu? He's a jujitsu world champion, young dude. All he eats is pizza every day. We talk about Mikey Masumechi. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Every day, makes his own pizza. Yeah. Rolls his own dough. Yeah. He's a nerd. He's a real and, genius little nerd, that kid. Right, right. A pizza genius, man. As as this guy Dave online would say from Barstool. There's a guy named Dave that, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's who you're talking about, right, Mikey? Mikey yeah, no, that's it. 100%. I yeah. was same with that dude, man. I started watching his stuff. And I'm like, holy crap, this dude's awesome, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's, yeah. he's making pizzas and stuff. There's a lot Jeez. of those who guys become uh, Gordon Ryan, of course, you know, guys like that. Right, right. Yeah, my, yeah, my nephew like, owns a jiu-jitsu gym. He's uh, like hey, the king. He's going to come on Saturday, man, and give his opinion on the Ali. Also, yeah, man. yeah, don't forget. Yeah, we'll drop the links, too, though. For um, um, Listen, Roro, I'm going to figure that out after I get off here, like with the email, because um, OG Ruby, though, sent it yesterday. And in this way, for like links and stuff, then we can drop them. And if anyone could just come on. Yeah. That's cool. And then I can send them to these some people in advance. And hey, man, Crime Spot, if you're into boxing and you want to give an opinion on that, come yeah, on. Yeah, I'm more into like MMA, Jiu Jitsu, but okay. Yeah, Sam, that's my world, though, too. But I know boxing, too, but I love MMA. Yeah. I got to agree. Once again, I got to bring Fish up, but I got to agree. And I was going to say that before he says about the person that said pizza's junk food. He said tomato is healthy, dough has been food for a thousand years. I agree 100%. Like, you're not going to tell me that. Like, I mean, no offense, but a slice with some fresh mozzarella, some protein from the mozzarella. Yeah, but have some jasmine bit, rice a and bit chicken. Of, and a little bit of tomato, a little bit of tomato on a thin crust. You're not going to sit here and tell me that's junk food. 
I mean, I'm not going to agree with that. How about the no, how about the dude no, man, with the carbs and the dough and the stuff like that, though? You if have you to look a whole at pie, with some, on a I fitness mean, level. It's not good for you if you're trying to diet and be at a fitness level, maybe on a cheat day. But how about, okay, how about my carbohydrates? I would just do quinoa or like some rice with chicken and all that. Plus, the food you eat, though, makes you feel better a certain way. Like, ever since I started eating healthier, like everything I'm looking at, it's like high definition. I drink it depends water. what it is, though. Like, if you're going to eat a pizza hut or if you're going to get a nice thin right. slice. It New appears York, exactly. Plain, thin slice, New York slice. I mean, I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, Snickers no, is junk food. I'm not saying food. that. I'm just saying, though, that it, it, it doesn't go, though, like with the normal, though, health. I get that part. Like, no, with I the know. And all that shit, if people are trying to stop. It's not harmful. It's not going to really do much anyway. I'm just saying, no, if you're just only in that, though, then I. Oh, of course. You can't How about what's his name? Day. What's the cat's name again? I'm sorry, man. I'm horrible with names. Mikey, uh, Italian last name, man. The dude the jiu-jitsu was the, guy? jujitsu guy. Yeah. Oh, I think oh, it's Massimechi. Mikey Massimechi. Okay. And you're good at last names. That's Every day, bro, the guy eats pizza. That's all he eats. Now he's yeah, eating the Pasta highest, pizza. highest quality ingredients. He, he's making it himself. So it probably doesn't have a bunch of uh, preservatives in it. He's, you know what I mean. He's, it, it, and that makes a difference, man. And and he's probably uh, doing like an OMAD type diet where he's not eating a bunch of junk or nothing all day. He's yeah. empty. Then he eats his pizza and he's it's enough calories where it it works yeah. out right. So I mean, GSP as far as what GSP George Saint Pierre said. I mean, he was eating junk food for years. I mean, he said in the interview, he's like. I don't know what he was he's like. I didn't know about nutrition. I was just eating pizza all day. Yo, what the you fuck, know? dude? What, dude, did you ever? Listen, I don't mean to cut you out. Do you ever fucking think about like fucking doing like fucking voice and prayer? Jesus Christ, dude! Yeah, you, we talked about some of the plans. I was gonna make some channels, so we'll see what happens with that. Awesome. But GSP, like he said, he would eat pizza. And he would eat junk food <laughs> all the time until he yeah. found out about nutrition. And now he's a fucking. Well, yeah. Same with uh, what's his name? Um, out there. Uh, like, oh my god. Masvidal, he would always just eat McDonald's and stuff. Yeah, like that. sure, man. A bunch of dudes, man. Look, look at CT Fletcher for years. I mean, he was powerless. Well, his heart, though, he's got a lot now. Yeah, but he had I a natural. People. He had a heart problem to begin with, though, man. But okay, beyond him, every fighter I knew at the gym ate okay. crap every day, pretty much. These it dudes didn't what you want to do diet diet too. Yeah. They didn't understand it. I'm just saying, could could they have been now? I'm telling you at that level, when Duva's guys came, some of those guys that had nutritionists, that had Tim Harmart, like uh, like Holyfield did, you know, and guys like that, they they were on a whole different uh, nutritional level. And that's why their performance was at a whole different level. Yeah. And you look at the difference in those guys. Look at look at opponents and, and contenders compared to the champs in, in boxing most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Just look. I mean, just, yeah. you know. No, one hundred percent, absolutely. And all, and everyone though is kind of different too. Different metabolisms, different whatever right, so works right. for you, and exactly. all that. No, that's it. That's so it. you guys, that's I'm not going to do that. Bro. <laughs> no, I was actually, dude, I love to do it. Every voice you do, he's like, it's good. Trust me, it's fucking good. So you guys are like, well, OG Mike, you're in, into boxing and stuff. Loomis, you're into MMA, Jiu Jitsu. I'm into boxing though too, but MMA is I'm like right now with what's going on in boxing, I'm more now into the MMA aspect. Yeah. Hamza Chamayev is my favorite fighter. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. a savage. I mean, just one, right? Yeah. yeah. Savage, dude. Fucking savage. You know, it's great though. Bo Nickel, who's kind of by me, Penn Bo State Nickel. all the way. Yeah. Bo Nickel's wrestling, wrestling is fantastic. Shout yeah. out to Bo Nickel. He's definitely going to be a future champ, I think, too. Just, he just has to, I think, even though he knocks people out. He needs to get in there like with a top 10 opponent, though, and then we'll really see the test. Well, he surprised me. Um, he fought that guy. Forgive yeah, me. I forget his will. name, so I'm just going to call him the black guy. I mean, he the, he was supposed to be on Contender Series, but they pushed him up to fight Bo Nickel in the UFC and the main – and uh, one of the Yeah, I forget his name. I know who you're tied. He knocked him but out, But I was right? surprised Bo Nickel pieced him up, and that was it. Pieced I was like, holy up. shit. I Bro, thought he, he was going to fucking somebody. wrestle him. He just yeah, fucking he pieced him up real people, quick. Though. And I was like, yeah. holy shit. I thought this kid was just going to wrestle him. Uh, that That's shocked me. I was like, wow, this dude. And that that black dude, was, you know, he was like serious, dude. He's a serious, like, up-and-coming yeah, guy. If you watch Bo Nichols wrestling, you could, like, even there's one time, like, when he's flipping, he just has that mindset, though. And he's uh, kind of like a Conor McGregor, how he had that mindset. And he would know he's not the best fighter in the world or nothing, but he's still just, he was on, like, an energy-type level frequency that was just insane. And knocks Aldo out in 13 seconds. But uh, 
I just, I fucking love Chimaev. He's going to fucking fight Strickland, I think, for the belt. But you never know what's going to happen. Strickland just beat freaking Al- Alessandra. Uh, Israel, I'm terrible at names. Yeah, Israel, 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 Israel Adesanya. <laughs> I can't, I'm fucking terrible. And I'm kind of tired though, but I love it. Sean That's Strickland, right. yeah, yeah, he's a nut, so but he's cool. Like oh, he's out of his fucking mind. Yeah, he had like a rough though, uh, childhood and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I think he's no guy who no guy who uh beats off the cartoons is gonna beat me. Because he's, you know, uh, I decided oh, yeah. to beat off the cartoons. Yeah, like and, anime uh, shit. Or whatever, yeah. <laughs> Stop the baloney, man. Stop I'm the baloney. Listen, guys, I like I Marab. Know. That's my dude. I like the Long Island guys. Oh, uh, yeah, Marab. Uh, but, you know, he won't fight, though, for the time. I know. That's but pathetic what's going on with him and uh, Sterling and all that whole shit. It's all drama. but Very like entertaining show. Loomis, Gentleman, Sausage, Pepperoni, and Mushroom on a nice med crust. Medium crust. Sicilian style is the winner here. Thank you, Dirty awesome. Dining. Sounds good. Thanks yeah. for some hot Thank onion. you, everyone, though, for tuning said. in, though. I mean, are you guys pretty much... Uh, hey, uh, somebody Tony, just dropped you. the... Sorry, yeah, I was going to tell you that. Tony Handsome. Thank, thank you so you, Tony. much. Thank you, cool, Tony. Very cool. Look, oh, guys, man. if you want to donate, though, the, the link is... Um, on top and in the description of the cash app. But thank you so much. I told Tony Handsome last time that he could, with that name, he could either be very handsome or he could be very ugly and unattractive and we would still call him handsome. That would be the that would be the names that you would get you right there, right? Exactly. Total opposite or exactly that. That's that's what you get. You know, every time my <laughs> next ghost, the ghost what's up? up? I didn't even know he was in there. Well, the ghost is always watching. My that's nephew goes to uh, just about every jujitsu competition he can go to, man. And he goes to the ones in New York every year, man. Oh, wow, and man. Uh, yeah, man, every time he films going to, to a couple pizza spots, he likes to go to and everything when he's there and oh, uh, he enjoys it. He, he lived there for a little bit, man. He wanted to stay there. Just couldn't get the foot and what he wanted to do there. That's why he came back. Was he training in New York? Do you know where he was training? He, when he was there, he wasn't training there. Okay. He, he, he was just trying to get a foothold and get in there. He was wor- I forgot even what it was, what he was doing. Uh, he started here with Saul Solis and them, and then uh, got in with Bruno Bastos and some guys here and opened his own gym. Now he's he's a black belt. He's got his own gym now. But that's uh, awesome. He that's loves awesome. to travel there, man. Any chance he whenever yeah. there's a big competition, I don't know what competition y'all have there. I know they he goes to the Worlds every year in Vegas, and he goes to the Pans and the different ones, and uh, wow, he enjoy he just he just competed last weekend man and won some stuff but anyway that's awesome. just he talk, man i did it for like three years um, did you yeah no wow. i do it yeah it's, it is that's there awesome is. i got a I was in a great though i was i was did doing you? good and then COVID though hit and yeah. was, the coach was doing at home ones but yeah it was tough man. it was what we did though we did leg locks everything he would just tell us fight as hard as we could and like yeah. stand up we started with stand up and it wasn't gi and uh mm. man that was fun yeah i did get a blue belt and then nice yeah, yeah, and then COVID did hit. I was at a Henzo Gracie school. Okay. Uh, you, in Queens. So we Some had, of my cousins go to Gracie schools. Yeah, so we had what would be called Blue Basement. That's what they call Manhattan, Blue Basement. Okay. So we had Blue Basement guys basically teaching us. Um, okay. Henzo Gracie was there for the when I got my blue belt. John Danaher, all these guys. I mean, wow. Porter Ryan like would, would teach. Just fucking yeah, I met. I have pictures with Danaher when I got my belt. I mean, he came all the way to Queens for our ceremony and shit. Wow. So I was really hardcore with jujitsu at the time. Then COVID awesome. hit. We all got shut down. Blue belt, the blue belt blues, as you call it. Everything fucking falls apart. But I was yeah. happy that I did accomplish it, that I did actually get it. Yeah, man, right. listen, a blue, be proud of that, though, man. And, That's uh, awesome, man. And speaking of, like, a guy like Chimaev, though, uh, he had his blue belt and he killed black belts. That Dagestani yeah, wrestling, I mean, sure. that Dagestani wrestling is unreal. But, Same with Khabib. Yeah. Leon, but like, you know, Next in a Henzo school, unless you're, like, really, really, really gifted, I mean, you know, that was, like, 16, 17 months training three, four times a week. Yeah, straight, you know, right, 16, right. you know, to, to earn that. So I'm sure. definitely proud that I fucking earned that. You got to put in work, like, right? That's not, it's not like you show up a couple times a week and you're getting your It's belt a very done. tough martial art. I mean, as you guys probably know, oh, it's, yeah. it's very tough. It's one of those things that you show up all the time. As long as you show up and get on the mats, though, like when they're having class all yeah. the time, then yeah, you will advance, though. But I didn't get my blue belt, though, yet because I, uh, I was on a war. I was doing good. Then COVID, though, hit. And then I would, then I went back a little bit. But that's like when I fucked myself up, though, during COVID. But yeah. I, I love it, man. It's fun. And yeah. um, I, I, yeah, I learned, you know what I mean? Like I learned, um, I'm pretty, 
I, I could, you know, I'm all right. No, yeah. I mean, if you train, face, no, I mean, kidding. the Henzo like system it. is very, it's very takedown heavy. It's very wrestling heavy. Right. That's why I see GSP. That's why I, I see fart. Gordon Ryan. All these guys win. It, it's very wrestling and takedown heavy. Right, right. System. Right. You know, yeah. Nako. You have advantage if you're wrestled already in like school. I wish I did. R- wrestling helps with every, I, that, Wrestling's awesome. Ninety percent of fights end up on the ground anyway, though. And you know why Bo Nickel comes in with his hands, though, because he at any time probably he knows if there's a threat, which is still risk because one shot could take you up. But if he knows there's a threat, he could just go to that wrestling. And if I'm fighting Bo yeah. Nickel and I miss his fucking face, I'm dead. You know what I mean? Well, I'd be dead anyway. But I'm just saying, though, wrestlers, I think they have the advantage. Wrestling's wrestling's a huge advantage. Nako Nolan, man, he was going to a Gracie Nako. school out there in uh, on the West Coast. Yeah, that's where he yeah, was. Yeah, another guy we had on doing that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got the crazy Kelly Bahas did. out there in, in the okay. West Coast. Yeah, yeah, he loves Tony Handsome. The answer is uh, Cherry Valley, but if it's a if it's a cold cut or a cold sandwich, I really don't care. But a hot one, it's probably going to be Cherry Valley over Christina's. Just just to answer Tony Handsome's question. All right, let me just tell everyone, guys, if please subscribe to NYC Crime Spot if you haven't already. The link is in the description again please like the video and also if you see this later in the comments if you say something in the comments that helps thank you all so much what do you think guys are you all about do you still got stuff to talk about man i'm man we're going on how long i'm three hours three hours we're going on three bro i'm 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 gonna yeah i'm good i'm good (laughs) i just want to i'll just say i just wanted to before uh, i just wanted to say a couple things to these people if you don't mind Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I mean, obviously, we didn't get to touch on everything today. I hope you guys, you guys, you come channel, back anytime. NYC Crime Spot. Um, it's probably better that we just bullshit anyway. Um, also, um, you, you, you guys don't mind if I plug my friend, do you? You, know you could, so you could fucking I plug. plug you guys right. appreciate it. Yeah, if you guys want to know more about, you know, the Roy DeMeo crew, my friend Quentin Walker, he's got a podcast called the darkness underneath on youtube Ooh, that's um awesome. he's well into writing a book on the crew he's got a lot of great sources for his info i don't know if you guys are aware but that case is one of, i think it's the longest case in organized crime history so there's tens of thousands of documents to do with that crew in courthouses in brooklyn and manhattan so i mean he's putting in a lot of work so if you guys want to really know about the story you can go to see my friend quentin um Please follow my channel. I'm going to be releasing a, a publication, a book uh, from my channel. I'll, I'll talk about that soon. That's going to be coming out. That's going to be pretty cool. You guys can buy that. They'll they'll probably be two different editions with that book. Um, and uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, both of you guys, thanks for having me on. I really enjoyed talking to you. Guys. I mean, thank you, man. man. Thank you so time. much, man, for for yeah, rolling no. with us too, man. Because I know I go off. To a different direction, left and oh, right. Like, yeah. Look yeah. at me! Look at me! I go all over. Man, it's probably right. tough to sit and talk with me, man. So Damn I appreciate me. it, nah, bro. dude. I'm fine. I mean, big I'm, time. It doesn't bother me. I'm like so like ADD. I mean, I can't even stay on the phone for five minutes without I'll lose track of what someone's telling me. It's Same like, here, man. So thank you. So I much. probably did that to Loomis earlier, actually. <laughs> nah. Hey, I do. Odd. I do want to get that article to you, man, to see if you could see anything else because you may have better. Oh yeah, dude. From there. It's a New York Times article from like the twenties, man. You know, the 1920s. It's, wow. My grandpa's wow. name's in there, and and his brother nice. was the one that got killed, man, in the bakery. So I want to, uh, I want to get that. Really? Thing, man. Yeah, straight up, man. Yeah, send that to me because sometimes the New York Times, like, they won't have as cool articles as like some of the other New York papers. Like, yeah. you might I'm, find like pictures or cool stuff in like another paper. Thanks, Pete. Got you. Yeah. So NYC Crime Spot at Gmail. Yeah, thank you, Pete. Okay. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. NYC Crime Spot at Gmail dot com. Or gmail. anybody wants to email me. Um, also, yeah, just let me say sorry for the way I acted before. I got mad because uh, that's not no, me. bro. No, no that's man. not me. I made the point since the beginning. I come on here not to get emotional and argue with people. That was coming from somewhere else because I saw a lot of that going on lately with this. No, we threw we throw people in the shit. corner. Yeah. So it comes from more of like being angry about the whole situation with people that do stuff like that. Like, not bro. even who it came from. Like, forget about that. No, I'm not even thinking about that one at all. No, you know, bro, just, we appreciate you being present. Order. It's we just want you to be on here and have a good time, man. You know, and not be, you know, and saying that's all. That's all our gig is, man. No, that's cool. I appreciate we it. Express, we we just want our guests to have a good time, man, and be respected. That's all. So man, you got nothing you to apologize. Do, <laughs> if you guys come to New York, that'll be cool. I'll show you some Steve, if there, if Steve's sure. out there too. Don't, you won the knife, buddy. Um, 
we are on the giveaway. So reach out to us. And um, I'm not even going to put on my email, though, because he just said his email. And I want people to subscribe to his channel. But please give us a like. Subscribe to this channel, too. But we're going to be back on Saturday with a, with a bunch of people dropping in for the Mike Tyson Ali debate. It's going to be fun. A lot of people are going to be coming in on it. Like I said, we cover all the rackets. Also, um, um, for uh, you roll up on me, bam, that's what's Oh, happening. shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Jamayev. Fucking man right there. Yesterday's show, if you missed it. No, we had some confusion. We had some people writing in. We, <laughs> listen, people were writing in asking if we are giving away pizzas. No, we are giving away a knife. Pizza. <laughs> we're talking about That's pizza, man. Are we going to talk about pizza like we did tonight? But we already told you, though, know, we're going to oh, get you. So we'll, we'll figure out a way how to get you pizza when you're in our town. Yes. And just like um, Dave came down here and, you know, if you're anyone's in the Scranton Wilkes-Barre area, let me take you on like the Buffalino tour in Pittston and all that. It's fun. Oh. Let me know. NYC Crime Spot. Remember, it's in the description. Check him out. Bro, don't even worry about any of that. Like I told him, you throw him in the corner and that's it. So uh, the show, this was awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank, thank you, you so much, on. bro. No, really thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Big time, bro. And Romo, I'm going to email you um, if I can try to figure this out here, though. And What are you um, trying to figure out, by the way? How to make your moderator. I think if you click on her name right now, you can do it in the chat. No. Right? No. Hold on. If it's that See? easy, man. Well, then really, no, really like right. actually on her name. like I got you. I am. I'm hitting her name. What do you mean? Now I could put them in timeout, hide them. All right, you know, you know how I think you can do it? Oh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Maybe he can because he's over there. No, no, no. Ban user and delete their comments. Or That's all I got. I hope I didn't ban anybody. You know how you can do it, I think? If you go into a, a your live stream from the other day into the live chat, you might be able to just do it from there. Okay. Yeah, but I mean on a laptop, though, right? Yeah, just go into your live chat. And if Roro commented in your live chat, you might be able to just do it from there, I think. My links will be blue. Okay. Yeah, I know. I, I hate man. When, when, I, like I was trying to fucking put up a link. I just think I think I just did, but it's all the way on the pin on the donation link, and it doesn't like come up. Did YouTube just recently stop letting us put blue links up? What in the live chat? No, even like normally, like if I'm like subscribe to Mafia Truth, if Mike makes a short and I want to pin it, it's not even like make it. It's not blue. I don't know what's going. We'll figure it out. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but I can she tell you right from, now. Yeah, from the studio. Um, I can tell you, you right OG now Ruby. if you can do it from the live chat. Uh, I'll let you know real quick. Hold on. Well, OG Ruby, though, um, sent me the uh, everything. There she is. I was sending him to add uh, some. Uh, um, you know what, though? Let me see if uh, I just. I can't even see my past live chat, so that's actually a problem. So I can't. Maybe I can't help you with that. No, I think I could figure it out. My what? live chats are all gone fuck is that about <laughs> i know man i was looking for it on our show too what the hell is that it. about even my old ones i can't even look at them what the jack cook does anybody know what's going on with that <laughs> no man i watched our show the other day not all of it i was just watching some of it to make sure i wasn't a douchebag and uh i tried to hit the live and there was nothing i mean you see the comments obviously come on the screen but that's it that's so weird. And thank you, Roro. You have no idea. Thank you so much. I found this guy, Dave. He tries pizzas. Oh God. <laughs> oh yeah. That, that guy, <laughs> subscribe, to NYC, subscribe to NYC Crime Spot. And um <laughs> thank you very much though for being on. And don't Appreciate forget it. Saturday's show. It's gonna be awesome. Anyone who wants to come on, drop the links, email me, get in touch. And fitness after 60, all he is Leon PT thank Ghost. Y'all. Uh, everyone out there, spot. Just shout out to Johnny O'Master, everyone. Thanks, we love you as Roro, OG Ruby, everyone, Farmer, um, Pete. Uh, thank you all so much. NYC, you're the man, brother. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. And thank guys, you, guys. Uh, again, um, what do you call it? Please subscribe and like, to, like the channel and also check out NYC Crime Spot. His channel is in, in our description. And again, thank you very much. And tell your friends about us because we ain't stopping and we're coming, motherfucker. All right, now I'm just in the mood. I love you. Good night. We'll see you soon. Everybody was hustling.
and everybody was seeing how they were connected to some way or another with either the patriarchs or the Gen I ran the drugs that into me in life. And you would have a guy who ran this into me in life. And that guy who ran that into me in life. I sold two or three thousand gallons of PCP, been kidnapped twice, shoot out with the police. No, I didn't look at it as anything like that. It was, oh, that's my dad. That's my grandpa. This is, you know what I mean? This is my family. Yeah. I was getting shot at with AKs, you know, shit like that. You know, turn the camera. That's the Air Lady I'm on from the club where I'll pull on They thought inside when they make the sausage, they grind up the sausage meat. They thought maybe he just ground up inside the sausage meat because my father-in-law hated this man. He was the one who was my brother-in-law. He was, so they thought maybe this guy ground him up in the sausage. Stop glorifying rats. Now you're police. Now let me ask you this. If you do an arrest and if someone just gives up their people, like, you know, you still want to see integrity, you know, like, where does that come from? Coming from the, the police angle. What's up? Tune in on Saturday on Mafia Truth. We're going to have a debate show on who will win between Iron Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali. It's going to be kind of a touchy show for some people. We've got some special guests coming on professional boxers, trainers, um, just other people that we respect their opinion on combat sports. So make sure and tune in. We're going to try to give a good, solid debate on both sides, Tyson versus Ali. Make sure and leave in the comments which one you would choose, who do you think, and maybe why you think they would win. So we'll see you on Saturday, Tyson versus Ali. Good night, everyone. Stay safe and please subscribe. Thanks again.